From Skydome on the banks of Lake Ontario, it's Friday Night Baseball on ESPN. The Blue Jays host the Yankees. Hello and welcome to our doubleheader coverage of the Major Leagues. I'm Gary Miller. I'll be with you throughout the night, updating you on everything else going on in baseball. But Toronto manager Cito Gaston will not be with the Jays as they host New York. Gaston continues to rest his bad back in the Toronto hospital. And while he hopes to return to the team by next week, he's also hoping his substitute, Gene Tennis, can figure out a way to win without him. He's 0-2 since taking over. Another manager with more than a share to contend with is the Reds' Lou Pinella, who, although he would admit he sometimes feels umpires are blind, he's hoping justice is not. In the face of a $5 million defamation suit by Gary Darling and the umpires' union, Friday, Pinella filed a countersuit, which, amongst its items, is asking that the case be dismissed. He said his comments against Darling were in the wake of a tough loss. Darling was accused by Pinella of being biased against himself and the Reds after reversing a home run call earlier this season in Cincinnati. Darling will work this evening's game between the Reds and Mets in Shea. One game already completed in the majors, the Padres trying to haul off a last-minute Cub comeback this afternoon at Wrigley. Down a couple in the ninth, the Cubs had rallied to tie it, and then Mark Grace curls the shot into the right field corner. By the time Tony Gwynn can get to it, Chico Walker has scored. The Cubs rally for three in the ninth and put it out five to four. They've now won 10 out of 14. They're nine back in the East. Here's some other storylines we'll be following for you throughout the night. In Atlanta, the Braves are just two back of the Dodgers. Tom Glavin going after his 16th win. The Tigers are just one out. Bill Gullickson is looking for his 15th victory. And at Memorial Stadium, Joe Orslack has the Major League's longest hitting streak. He's three shy of the Orioles' all-time record. Our doubleheader coverage continues from Anaheim. The Red Sox against the Angels. It's Young against Abbott. Right now, Toronto's lead over the Sox is down to three and a half. Just one game on Toronto. They're set to host the Yankees. We'll go to Skydome next. ESPN Major League Baseball is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. By Red Devil Oil Enamel for the finish of a lifetime. By Hershey's Syrup with genuine chocolate flavor. Hershey, the chocolate people. And by BF Goodrich TA Tires, the most exciting change you can make to your car. The Jays do that. We have done it in the past. Uh, whether we will do that this year or not, or whether we can look back and say, well, those two weeks that we went through bad times is just part of the game and everybody goes through them. the Sky Dome in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, home of the Toronto Blue Jays who are in first place. But are they going to stay there? The Detroit Tigers are just one game out. Boston not far behind. And this is a Toronto team that in the middle of July was ahead by eight games. Hello, everybody. Gary Thorne, Ray Knight, and welcome to the Sky Dome. Some people are saying this is the Greg Luganis team of baseball. When the going gets tough, they take a dive. That may not be fair. This is not the same team that's been here in Toronto over the past few seasons. But Ray Knight, there are some holes. Well, Gary, there certainly are some holes. The top three hitters in this lineup have done a tremendous job carrying the load for this offense. The bottom part of the offense has been atrocious. Kelly Gruber last year drove in 100 runs. He's not even going to approach that this year, even though he's been injured. John Olerud, the fourth hitter, has uh, 15 home runs, but only 48 RBIs. Pat Borders, the catcher tonight last year, had 15 home runs to solidify the bottom part of this lineup. This year he has one. The key, I think, is the acquisition of Candy Maldonado. He's a guy that can drive in big runs, and I think he's going to be the key to this offense. And there you see the shadows being cast as the sun sets outside of the Sky Dome here in Toronto. They have the roof open for tonight's game because it's a cloudless sky right now. As you take a look at that CN Tower, the spindly needle right there. And the New York Yankees have come to town. This is the first of a three-game series. For Stunt Merrill's ball club, Bernie Williams, star of the future. He's there now in center field. Steve Sachs batting 300. He'll be at second base. Don Mattingly, the hair is shorter. He'll be at first. In right field, some big home runs this season for Mel Hall. Left fielder instead of center now for Roberto Kelly. Matt Noakes will do the work behind the plate, left-handed hitter. The DH, lots of power. Kevin Moss, but lots of strikeouts, too. At shortstop, Randy Velarde. He'll be batting eighth. And batting ninth, third base, another youngster, Pat Kelly. And Tom Candiotti, the pitcher tonight, the AL earned run average leader for the Toronto Blue Jays, 10 and 11 record. Just 149 hits. Outstanding knuckleball, big curveball that he throws any time in the count. 
and a fastball these Saints. Catching Pat Borders. And the infield for the Blue Jays. Manning Lee, the shortstop, taking over for the departed Fernandez. In the outfield, we have Candy Maldonado, newly acquired left fielder, DH, and the man that I think is going to be a catalyst in getting this offense jump started here with the last 30, 40 games left in the season. Okay. And there's the acting manager, Gene Tennis, as Cito Gaston with that bad problem with a bad back that has really become painful for him. The third game for Tennis. He is looking for his first win as a major league manager of any sort, and he'll be there for the interim. And there's Stump Merrill trying to put together a New York Yankee team which is rebuilding and is better this year. And I have a feeling these Yankees are going to be a real problem for the Eastern Division teams. Tom Candiotti, the knuckleballer to Bernie Williams, and we are underway in the first half of our ESPN Friday night doubleheader. Here's the young man who's struggling right now. He has struck out five times in a row. That's the golden sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> five times in one game. That was on Wednesday night against Kansas City. So he's looking to get out of that. He tied a Yankee record man by the name of John Brolaca 1934. The only other Yankee ever to strike out five times in one game which is kind of hard to believe. Only one other guy's ever done that in the history of this power hitting New York Yankee. Team. Yeah but I tell you five times in a row that's a lot of whiffs not putting the ball in play and you mentioned that golden sombrero being five Sam Horn struck out six in a row Mac Mike Flanagan said that's called a horn and had he struck out seven times he was going to name it the horn of plenty <laughs> <laughs> I love it <laughs> all he wants to do right now is put the ball in play I think at this point just to get get rid of the K's this is a real speedster and an outstanding defensive center fielder he's had but one hit in his last 14 at bats and he must be good because he's taken over for Roberto Kelly in center. And here's someone who is really good. Tom Candiotti, opposition hitting just 221 against him, tied for fourth best in opponents' batting average. Right handers are hitting just 194 off Candiotti this season. 3 2 delivery, and Williams takes it and draws the walk. That is but the 55th walk given up. They check at first base, whether well, third base, no swing. So the leadoff man's on. So Candiotti's got a problem right away. Yeah, he certainly does. Bernie Williams has base stealer speed. They expect him to steal 30, 40 bases. You mentioned him taking over for Roberto Kelly, who's moved to left field. Roberto's not too happy about that. We'll address that a little later. But this man, Bernie Williams, is the type of guy that can be a franchise player for the next 10 or 12 years. Now let's see what happens at first. Candiotti does something unusual. He does not throw over to first base. Steve Sachs up. Uh, Candiotti will throw over to first base a ton. He has the fourth most throws to first base this season among American League pitchers. So expect lots of work over there for John Olrood, the first baseman holding the bag. And there's our first. Ray, I was looking at some interesting numbers on Candiotti. You combine the fact he throws over fourth most. He has thrown more pitches than any other American League pitcher this season. 2,950 plus now. You combine that with all those pickoff throws, this guy's got a rubber arm. Well, he does, Gary, and the thing is that knuckleball just doesn't take anything out of your arm. Phil Necro pitched on to he's 45, 46 years old, and he's able to just throw pitch after pitch after pitch, and it's just not like a power pitcher who, after he throws 100 pitches, starts to lose something. Bernie Williams at first base, five for nine in stealing bases. Measuring the lead on Candiotti, who he sees for the first time. Gary, that's a, a good point about measuring Candiotti. Bernie Williams talked to a lot of guys in the, on the club. He has not learned to run bases. He does not have the instincts of a natural base runner. He has that burning speed. Sachs gets a base hit to right field. Carter up, Williams will stop. And the Yankees have it going in the first inning. Steve Sachs has a seven game hit streak. 13 for his last 25. Two on and nobody out. Well Steve Sachs with that real short stroke. Little cut fastball just moving down and away. He slaps it to right field. Which he does as well as anybody. Just keeps the ball in play. He's not over swing. Hitting 300 again this season. 
Goes over the mark with that base hit right there. And Tom Candiotti's got to work now with two on. And nobody out. And Don Mattingly at the plate, who has been a Candiotti nemesis. Don Mattingly in his career is a 300 hitter against Tom Candiotti with four home runs. No Yankee has hit better against Candiotti than Mattingly. The Yankee captain. He's right there again with the average. RBI numbers and home run numbers are down, but he's got an RBI opportunity right here. Two on, nobody out. Mattingly way out in front of an inside pitch. Well, a lot of people say that you hit the knuckleball by waiting on it. Some people say you move forward in the batter's box. I don't think there's any way to guess because what happens when your eyes see the ball out in front of the plate, that's where you're going to take the bat. And then in the last second, the ball, or millisecond, the ball moves, and that's why there's so many missed swings. It's just a great eye-hand coordination that enables these hitters like Mattingly to put the bat on the ball. And he does it again and almost picks off his first base coach that time. And he got a, a good piece of the bat on that one. But look how Don Mattingly just stays there, almost leaning out over the plate with his head. I've talked about that so often, but you just go to Walt Reniak or any of the great hitting coaches, and they will tell you the primary factor in hitting a baseball hard is putting your head right on home plate so that you see the baseball. Greg Nettles, the first base coach, is the one getting out of the way. One, two, two on. Mattingly right off the fist. Donnie has continued to be this season, as he always has been, a very very good clutch hitter. He's batting 333 with runners in scoring position. And while he has the bad back ray, which certainly is affecting some of his game, he still puts up some big numbers. Well, and he, he's made adjustments. You mentioned he's hit 35 home runs in his career, but look at his hands. That's a lot like Yaz and early in his career. Yaz later in his career dropped his hands, but here Donnie has got his hands up there above his helmet. He always had his hands flat right around shoulder height. And over the last two weeks that I've observed him, he's continued to get his hands up higher and higher and higher and drops them as the pitch is on its way. And the controversy in New York has will be developed over about anything. Mattingly did ask to be traded about a month and a half, two months ago. And that's still the status of the situation. Two on here. Nobody out. Candiotti. Another knuckler. Popped up to third. Kelly Gruber. Big out for Candiotti. One away, runners have to hold. Boy, Candiotti's got that ERA, which is the best in the league. He's tough when it gets tough. That's why it's so tough to hit. When a guy throws a fastball hard, you can always adjust up. When he starts throwing change-ups, you can adjust down. When you see sliders moving away, you can adjust to the movement. But knuckleballs never break the same way. So as a hitter, you heard Don Mattingly yell right there. He just got a knuckleball that broke a little difference, and there's just not anything you can do about it. Well, let's see what happens with Mel Hall. He's had but one hit in 13 at-bats lifetime against Tom Candiotti. Hall comes in, getting back into the lineup and working in right field. And Candiotti, left-handers do have better success against him than the right-handers do. You see the power of Mel Hall. As we said, he's had some big home runs. Bernie Williams bluffed back to second base. He's at second. Sachs is on at first. Here's Williams. Tom Candiotti has had some great starts. Last three starts, his ERA is 1.23. He has been real tough. And they have needed it because they've been struggling here in the month of August. Toronto Blue Jays are now 8 and 12. Whether they make it or not, number 49 is going to make a real difference. Lifetime record of 81 and 76 against the Yankees. 0 and 1 this year, 7 and 7 lifetime. Shorting out, shortest outing this season was against New York. They hit him pretty hard in one game, and he lasted only four. That's going to be a base hit. That's going to score a run towards the gap. Devon White over to get it. Williams scores. Sachs will go to third. And the Yankees have a 1 0 lead. Sachs will stay. The throw, and they got him at third base. Rich Garcia making the call as Sachs made the big turn. 
The ball was tracked down by Roberto Alomar, and Sachs is out at third base. Here comes Stump Merrill. More to protect his player than argue the call. Well, Alomar lets the ball get away from him, but what happens? Kelly Gruber actually gets between the bag and puts his knee down and blocks Sachs off, and that's the reason he's out. He actually got back, but Gruber got his leg down and, and kept him from getting to the bag. If you gutsy enough, that's a great play. <laughs> it is a great play. So the run scores. Mel Hall ends up at first base with an RBI single. The Yankees have a one to nothing lead. But now there are two down with a runner at first for Roberto Kelly. Takes the pitch inside for a ball. The putout goes 8 4 5 on Sachs at third base for Mel Hall. His RBI total now at 71. And Roberto Kelly, 4 for 10 on the current road trip. The Yankees 2 and 1 at Kansas City on this trip. Had yesterday off. Gary, the book on John Candiotti, Tom Candiotti, is that he can't throw the knuckleball over. He goes to the curveball. 2-0 pitch, Mel Hall knows that. Here's a big curveball. He just sits back and laces it out there over shortstop. Tom Candiotti will not throw you very many fastballs when you're ahead of him in the count. He goes to that curveball. Hitters know it and sit on it. Boy, he sat on that, didn't he? He sure did. Good stop made by Borders. You saw in that swing by Hall, he had all but committed his whole body except the bat. He'd already strided, shifted weight, but the bat was still back. Two down here, run in, two ball, one strike count on Roberto Kelly. Candiotti, if he gets out of this just giving up the one run, it'd be a pretty good job because but for that play at third base, he's in real trouble. Galen Sisko, the pitching coach. For the Jays. There'll be a lot of help for Gene Tennis here. Making sure the staff is treated appropriately. And we wish Cito Gaston our best. Swung on and tagged. Deep center field. Way back. Devon White looking up. Warning track. Wall. He's got it. He had a bead on that right off the bat. A 399-foot fly ball out. Candiotti will light a candle. On paper, the Toronto Blue Jays have hurt themselves this season defensively, but one of the people who does not do that to them is Devon White, who made that catch in center. Toronto Blue Jays trying to get out of a two-game losing streak. Have Devon White leading it off in center field. Roberto Alomar as good as they come at second base. Joe Carter, the RBI man, far and away for this Blue Jays team. Batting cleanup, first baseman John Olrud, the newly acquired Candy Maldonado will make the start in left field. Kelly Gruber still hurting a bit, but he's playing regularly at third. Mookie Wilson is the designated hitter, switch hitter in tonight's game. So Mookie's going to get some playing time. Pat Borders will be doing the catching, a right-handed batter batting ninth to shortstop Manuel Lee. And pitching for the New York Yankees tonight, rookie six foot one, 185-pound Wade Taylor. Just 25 years old. Good fastball, 90 miles an hour. Curve ball that, that he's been encouraged to throw this year. Slider and changeup. Matty Noakes, the front runner from Comeback Player of the Year behind the plate. And defense, Pat Kelly, the rookie at third base. Uh, eventually going to be the second baseman for the Yankees, I imagine. And in the outfield, Bernie Williams, the speedster, who's just done a tremendous job for them defensively, forcing Roberto Kelly to left. Dome open here as we get a look at the 25-year-old right-hander who makes his 15th Major League start. Called up from Columbus, the AAA team of the Yankees, on May 31st. He was acquired in a deal with Seattle involving Steve Trout and Henry Cotto. He was originally drafted by these Blue Jays and the Dodgers, but did not sign. His last start against Chicago at Yankee Stadium. He was a 4-2 winner in that one. Well, let's see what we get out of Wade Taylor. And it's fouled off by Devon White. Whether or not Wade Taylor is going to be one of the starters in the Yankee rotation next year is still up in the air if you talk to the Yankee people. So 
Taylor's outings here at the end of the season are very important for him. They always are, but he's a guy who needs some good outings here at the end of the year to earn a spot in the Yankee rotation. Gary, he got better and better and better. In A ball, he had a four plus earn run average, and he went to three. His last year in AAA, he was six and four with a 2.19. He was one of those guys that continued to develop. And Mark Connor believes that he can become a fourth or fifth starter in this rotation. In the minor leagues, he threw a lot of strikes. Up here, he's tried to be too fine. As a result of that, he gets behind and got major league hitters are hitting 310 off of him this year. And here he is behind again right away. Three ball, one strike count on Devon White. And White clobbers one, not even going to move. Goodbye, home run, tie game. Home runs, 45 RBIs for Devon White. Well, we talked about this offense and how Devon White, Roberto Alomar, and Joe Carter has done for this team. I mean, game in and game out, they've just exploded early. Fastball up right over the middle of the plate. Devon White just unloads on it, hits it about 410 out there to right center. But I. There's no team in baseball with three better one, two, and three hitters. You just can't name a team that has more offensive punch, ability to hit home runs, get a lead early. But the bottom part of this lineup has really struggled this year. See what happens in this one. Roberto Alomar, ground ball towards the middle. Nice stop, Velarde. Major League play to get a diving. Roberto Alomar. Randy Velarde. Robbing Alomar of a base hit up the middle. Why don't we start this out in a hurry? Well, that, Gary, that shows you right there. 42% of the runs, just three guys out of nine in this batting order. 44% of the doubles. Triples, almost half the triples on this ball club. 40% of the RBI. That batting rest, average tells the story, too, doesn't certainly, it? Certainly, it sure does. All these men have been hitting around 280, 285 all year. Remainder of the team, just a little above 240. So, one away, and that'll bring up Joe Carter. He's pumped the average up with an 11-game hit streak. That's the third. Pat Kelly over to Don Mattingly. And there are two down. By the way, for the Toronto Blue Jays, they are eighth in the league coming into this game in home runs. Toronto Blue Jays like a little more pop. That is their 100th home run of the season as a team. So Gene Tennyson Ball Club gets back here on the homer by White. Two down now, nobody on in a 1 1 ball game. And here's John Olrood. The thing that amazed me was the fact that Cleveland's the only team that has scored less runs in the American League than Toronto. And when I looked at that, I couldn't believe that because early in the year I felt that this team was going to be a, an explosive offensive unit, and they certainly are in that front part of the order, but, but they just have not scored the runs that most people thought they were going to score. Olrood takes it inside. Ray, we were talking this morning about what I think two big numbers I always look at on teams are slugging percentage and on-base percentage. Toronto has a slugging percentage fifth in the league but they're 11th and on base so they're getting extra base hits but there's nobody on to drive them to drive in so that means you don't score a lot of runs that's right that puts a pretty good burden on your pitching staff and as a result they've played a lot of games that, that they've won by one run or they've been a tremendous amount of one run ball games because they haven't been able to put it on big run innings. John O'Rourke retired as Bernie Williams cruises over on the line drive to center field but a leadoff homer by Devon White has tied this ball game up from the dome. The Yankees and Jays. One of the stories following Stump Merrill and the Yankees around is whether or not they're going to get their number one pick, Brian Taylor, signed. He's 19 years old. He wants some big money, and he says they have until Sunday to make a decision. If he's not signed, he says he's going to Lewisburg, North Carolina College. And right now, they're not close on the money. A statement released by Gene Michael today. The Yankees GM saying that the discussions go on with Taylor and his mother and the agent but he still wants a Van Poppel type contract 
Todd Van Poppel of the A's who got one point two million dollars in it. Gene Michael says I've tried to explain the problem we have with that contract and we'll keep talking and try and get it done before Sunday. And the audience pitch outside. Well Gary I certainly don't know the young man but I signed out of high school hardly for anything. There are a couple of people that were drafted the same year Bill Horn a great pitcher from my high school drafted number two by Houston went on and played at Florida State and hurt his arm and and never got a chance to play and he certainly wasn't offered that kind of money but when you're offered six hundred fifty thousand dollars you can do a lot for your family for that kind of money and the fact is this if, if Taylor is going to be a major league pitcher center field by Matty Noakes called in by White if he's going to be a major league pitcher he's going to earn millions of dollars if he's going to be a quality major league pitcher even mediocre major league pitchers earn seven hundred eight hundred thousand dollars so the man ought to think seriously about taking the money they're off to pay for his college education if he doesn't do well in baseball then he can fall back on it but six hundred fifty thousand dollars a lot of money turned out yep. we are in the sky dome in Toronto Gary Thorne Ray Knight first half of our Friday night doubleheader one one ball game taking a look at the designated hitter Kevin Moss of the Yankees against Tom Candiotti. Lots of power in one of the most unique swings in baseball right now. Taylor made for Yankee Stadium. And he fits right in the Mark McGuire mold, doesn't he? He sure does. Frank Howard, the hitting coach for the Yankees, talked to me at length before the ball game about Kevin Moss and the fact that last year everybody challenged him with fastballs. Donnie Mattingly was not in the the batting order and, and he got this feeling that he was a great fourth place hitter and he with it came a lot of confidence now they're starting to throw nothing but curve balls off speed pitches split fingers and then when they do throw him the fastball his timing's off so he has to readjust there's another curve ball and that one is hit in the air behind the mound and shortstop Manuel Lee wants it and puts it away and just finish that thought Gary what he's done is he's gotten off the fastball he's gone up there looking for other pitches and he hasn't been able to hit the breaking ball like that and, and when they do throw him a fastball that he normally rattles the seats and right field with he has not been able to get the bat barrel out a struggle against candy Audi if he's looking for a fastball Kevin Moss becomes a second out here in the second inning two down and Randy Velarde is making the start at shortstop in tonight's game stands in Numbers for Velarde on the season. Two hits in his last 11 at bats. Those are his numbers on this current road trip for the Yankees. New York Yankees are trying to play some 500 baseball. They have not played 500 ball for the last four years. Over the last five years, their record has gotten worse each year. They're going to break that streak. They will have a better record than last year by the time this season is done. They were 67 and 95 last year right now they are 55 and 64 unless they lose about every game remaining which they're not going to do they'll have a better ball club a better number than they had last season two ball one strike count Stump Merrill and Gene Michael have really used the season to try and build getting people like Williams Bernie Williams up and playing and Pat Kelly up and playing a lot of a lot of pitches drilled in the air left center field going back on his horse Devon White looking up and can't get that one it'll bounce back over his head making the turn at second base going four three Velarde up back you go it's a double I think Devon White would like to have another chance on that ball that almost hit him well what he did he started across he started laterally it's another Looks like a fastball that just doesn't do anything right over the middle of the plate. Devon White started in and then a little bit lateral instead of going straight back. But look how he bounces on this ball. Comes up. Perfect throw to Gruber to third base to keep Velarde at second. Nine doubles picked up now by Randy Velarde. Two down, a runner in scoring position. And here is Pat Kelly, who's not going to catch up with the breaking ball from Tom Candiotti. Is another one of the youngsters that we were talking about. As Ray said, this is the second baseman of the future who's playing at third base because the Yankees don't have anybody else to play there. And they have Steve Sachs, a 300 hitter, at second base right now. Which poses the question now what do you do? Well, they signed Sachs to that long term contract and they hoped that he would be able to move over and play third base. They tried him there for a couple of games. He didn't work out. He wasn't comfortable there. And the kid, Pat Kelly, 
told Stump Merrill that he would be glad to play third base. He just wanted to play, and they've stuck with that ever since. And that's going to be a base hit in the center field with two down. Velarde running. Devon White will make the throw to the plate. Cut off all route. A chance at second. Not in time. A two out RBI single for Pat Kelly. And the Yankees go back on top by a score of two to one. And for Pat Kelly, RBI number 21. And he stung that pitch by Tom Candiotti. Well, they feel that they can get out of Pat Kelly what they're getting out of Steve Sachs, and they're paying Sachs $2 million, and, and this kid less than 150000 And they just feel that he's the type of guy that can do the things that Steve Sachs can do. But the problem is, Sachs, he's now making that $2 million for the next three years, and there's not very many clubs that are going to give that kind of money or take that kind of contract over when you can just play second base a little better than adequately and, and not hit with a lot of pop. So Saxe in at second and Kelly playing third. That's what that shakes down to. Lead off batter Bernie Williams drew a walk and scored at an RBI single by Matt Hall in the first inning. 2-1 lead for the Yankees. That one misses up high. So Williams got out of the strikeout mold drawing the walk. He's been in that leadoff spot since taking over. Last 35 games, he scored 21 runs out of that leadoff spot. Leading off the game, he's been 7 for 28 with 8 walks. He's done a good job getting on base in the number one spot. Played most of the season at AAA Columbus. He was hitting 294 in 78 games there. And they like him. He has been one of the Yankee players who's been groomed from day one. They said this is the Yankee center fielder of the future, and they refused to rush him. They let him play at the minor league level until they felt he was ready to play Major League Baseball. One to the count, two down. Runner at second base. And Williams fouls it back. Count stays a ball and two strikes. Credit Kelly with a single and goes down to second on the throw to the plate that was cut off. Good heads up base running by Pat Kelly. You mentioned Bernie Williams having struck out five times in a row prior to walking here in the first inning. He has a very long swing, Gary. He's got a lot of hand action. He's six foot three. Uses his hands extremely a lot and has just a lot of movement. He needs to cut down a little bit on that movement. Frank Howard wants him to get his bat a little flatter. He has it almost upright, perpendicular, which causes him to loop under the ball a little bit. Watch how much movement he has in his bat. He's but 22 years old, and yet he has been playing in the minor leagues since 1986. The 277 minor league batting average. This is from up top, and he's just, see how he goes forward, his hands come forward. That's one thing that's death on an off-speed type pitcher. Even though your body moves forward, your hands must stay back in order to generate any type of bat speed. He's a wrist hitter, isn't he? Yes, he is. 3-2, Candiotti. And he got him. So Bernie Williams is retired with a runner in scoring position. That's unusual because that kid was over 400 in those situations. Andy Audi living a little dangerously, but only behind by one. What a beautiful night. Looking down into the Sky Dome with that CN Tower, that needle that sticks up right outside the dome here. And some of the folks in one of the suites enjoying baseball and food and assorted adult beverages. Strike call. <laughs> Strike call on the inside corner. Hey, it's Friday night. Why not? Here's Candy Maldonado, the man Ray was talking about in our open and the difference he may make on this team. How come? Because he's been with a lot of winners. He's the type of guy that spent most of his career as a pinch hitter coming off the bench in crucial situations for the Dodgers and had that great year for the Giants. They passed us a note here that he's been on a division winner in 83, 85, 87, 89. Every odd year here is 91. Good chance he's going to be on a division winner again. This time he's going to sit down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Candy Maldonado is all hitters do when you're talking about him. Takes a call third strike. 
First strikeout for Wade Taylor. He's got 50 strikeouts in 77 innings this season. And Maldonado is the first out of the second inning. Bring up one of the fan favorites here in Toronto, and uh, that is Kelly Gruber. I have great respect for Kelly Gruber. The numbers are nowhere near what he'd like him to be. This guy is going to hit around 300 when he's 100%, but he's hurting, but he's going to play. He has a chip fracture in his right thumb that's never wholly healed. And when he swings the bat, oftentimes it hurts. Especially if he gets one of those bee stingers off the end of it or somewhere on the handle. It really sends a chill. Well, he has a very quick bat. He's very strong. Dead fastball hitter last year. Had that huge season where he hit 31 home runs with 36 doubles and 118 RBIs. Kelly succumbing to a little of the pressure. He heard a lot of rumors or talk that he wasn't playing and he should be in the lineup. He came back a little early. You heard a lot of that too, Gary. Yeah, he, he got tired of people talking about whether or not he was really hurt. You see, the donut is used to lessen the impact on that fracture. It's right at the base. There's one that hurts. Oh, man, it'll just kill you. The bone actually separated. He had a split in the bone on that thumb right down at the bottom of it. And it just won't heal. And as long as he keeps playing, it's not going to heal. He knows that, but in a pennant race, there really isn't any other choice. They need him in the lineup for defense and they need him for offense and they need his leadership. That one bounced and the count is two balls two strikes one out nobody on Wade Taylor. Taylor doesn't get you very far thus far one of the problems for him he's averaging only four five point four innings per start. That's below the major league average of six point one. Did he go. No. Mike Riley first base umpire. Well, another one of those you look at the front of the plate there that's supposed to be the barometer and according to the replay it always shows swing doesn't it. That sure looked like one didn't it. I think Gruber thought he'd gone around he took a long look down at first base and didn't want to stare so he turned around quick. <laughs> he thought he thought he'd gone around on that. Three balls, two strikes on him now. Mike Riley at first. Chuck Merriweather's working the plate. Larry Young at second, and Rich Garcia at third, rounding out the umpiring crew. Three two delivery, and he's on. Walk by Taylor, and keeping us up to date on other scores, Gary Miller. Gary Budweiser takes you to Three Rivers for the latest in the NL East. Bobby Bonilla had doubled off the Giants' John Burkett. Barry Bonds makes it B&B &B for a run. Singles in Bonilla. Pittsburgh takes the one to nothing lead. Giants are coming to bat in the third off Drebeck. Down a run. We go back to Skydown. Thank you, Gary. There is Kelly Gruber on at first base with the walk with one out. And it'll bring up the designated hitter, switch hitter, Mookie Wilson. See Mookie's numbers on the season. And for Mook this season, he's batting just 188 right handed, but 260 left handed. He's had a couple of home runs. Both of them have come from the left side. He's only had 32 at bats right handed this season. And Wade Taylor will keep an eye on Kelly Gruber over at first base. Gruber's had seven stolen bases, seven for 13. Don Mattingly on the bag. Off speed pitch. Taylor misses with that one. We have a couple of pitchers in this game who throw a lot of pitches. Candy Audi, that's all right for Taylor. Makes it a whole lot tougher to get deeper into the pitch count early in the game. He is not a knuckleball pitcher. 1 1 delivery. Foul back by Mookie, and it's 1 and 2. Tom Candiotti with the arm wrapped up, waiting and uh, watching. The Yankees have left one on in each of the first two innings of the ball game. He's had people on base. One-two delivery by Taylor. Breaking ball misses inside to Wilson. Two and two. Well, Mookie's the type of hitter that'll give Wade Taylor problems if he doesn't change speed on him. Speed on him. Mookie likes the fastball. He likes everything hard. And he swings at anything close normally. 
Well, he's never been known to hang around there a long time, has he? No, he hasn't. Before the ball game, he was expressing that he just hasn't felt like he's played enough. He's hardly played at all, as you mentioned, the last month and a half of the season. Doesn't feel real comfortable at the plate, but said that he really felt more uncomfortable on bases. They use him a lot pinch running. Mookie stole 24 bases last year, 18 the year before that. He's always been an outstanding base stealer. This year has not stole but three bases. Base runner going, slap to short. Velarde will have to go to first on Mookie and a nice pick by Don Mattingly. That'll get the out two down, runner at second. Let's check with Gary. Gary, here's what's going on in the NL West. Tom Glavin going for his 16th win facing the Phils. Lenny Dykstra with a man aboard. Shaw in, single out to center field. Dickie Thon comes in to score the first run of the game. The Braves are down one to nothing. They trail the Dodgers by two in the West. We go back to Skydo. Uh, a couple of ball clubs who in their last meeting had some beaning incidents going on. So see whether or not that carries over or not. Runner on at second is Kelly Gruber. Two down now. And the RBI opportunity is for Pat Borders, the catcher, with two down. And the Yankees leading here by a score of 2 1. Toronto Blue Jays coming off an 8 7 loss. They blew a lead against Milwaukee. Last night, three and three against the Yankees this year, and that is a base hit. Gruber the turn. Kelly up. Throw to the plate by Kelly off the mark. And the game is tied at two. RBI single for Pat Borders. 20 runs batted in. A fastball from Wade Taylor down and in. Borders recognizes the pitch, turning on and hitting a hard ground ball to left field. Kelly charging the ball, making a strong throw, but just up the line. Swift Kelly Gruber scoring. And Roberto Kelly has moved from center to left field, and Borders gets the RBI single to tie this game up. So these teams are matching each other in runs. And that will bring up the number nine hitter Lee. Did he go? Yes. Chuck Merriweather, the home plate umpire, makes that call on his own. Well, a lot so, of pitchers. Two-two game. Excuse me, Gary. A lot of pitchers get ahead with a fastball and go to the breaking ball. Wade Taylor, thus far this ball game, has thrown a lot of breaking balls early in the count, and when he's been hit hard, it's been with a fastball. There's another breaking ball, but he started Manny off with a breaking ball. Gruber off with a breaking ball. Eventually walked him. Started Mookie off with two breaking balls, got ahead of him, then threw him a fastball that he hit to short. And then the base hit to Borders, followed a breaking ball that was he was ahead 0-1 on. Looks like he's uh, still struggling here, even though it's his 15th start, to find a rhythm for himself on the mound. Foul back by Lee, who did not get around on a pretty good-looking fastball. Yeah, and the count is one ball and two strikes. Well, any time that you clock a man and he throws 88 to 92 miles an hour, which Wade Taylor does, you just scratch your head when he, when the hitters hit 310 off of him. It has to be location because when you get the ball up there that quickly, you know it should be tough to put the ball in play consistently. Inside corner off-speed pitch. Lee wasn't so sure about that, but Merriweather was. Lee's saying he was up too high. He's gone, but another run in. The walk hurt as Gruber scored, and this game's tied. Well, Toronto takes on the Yankees. They're also concerned with what the Tigers are doing. Just a game back, and with the bases loaded in the second off, Brian Holman, the golden opportunity on a full count. Edgar Martinez with a spectacular play, and the stretch by Tito Martinez at the corner. They hold off the rally, and it's still scoreless as they go to the third. Let's go back to Skydo. There you see it. Toronto on top, but only a game ahead of Detroit, and all of a sudden, Boston finds themselves right back in it as the Red Sox go out to the West Coast for a trip. Three and a half games. Paul Molitor says, wait a minute, don't stop there. We aren't out of this thing either. Now the Blue Jays have destiny in their own hands. They've had the lead virtually all of this year. Tom Candiotti ready to go to work. 2-2 ball game. Steve Sachs leading it off. Single his first time up. Is hit safely in seven consecutive games at a phenomenal 13 for 25 clip. Obviously leads the ball club in hits and is among the top ten in that department. Sixth in the league in hits. 
And that one to left field. Right at him. Called in by Candy Maldonado. Gets away. Touchdown. A 47 yarder to win it for Alabama. It is good. It's time. ESPN kicking off the coverage of college football. August 31st, doubleheader. East Carolina, Illinois, and Pittsburgh and West Virginia. So mark it down. August 31st. Doubleheader on ESPN. And don't forget ESPN's exciting Thursday night package of football. There'll be a total of almost 50 games along part of that Thursday night package. But we played the first by Olrood. And that'll take care of Mattingly. And there are two down. Candiotti gets the second out, two down, nobody on. Mel Hall coming up, 2 2 ball game. And the breaking ball is up high. Hall had the RBI single in the first inning that drove home Bernie Williams, getting his average up to that 300 mark now. That's what happens on a good knuckleball pitch. Fall over the plate and feel bad about doing it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy can throw a pretty good knuckle. 15 and 11 last season for Candiotti. There's another one in there. Well, Dave Bergman faced Candiotti last week and said that Tom Candiotti had the best knuckleball he's ever faced. And I know Berge very well, and we talked about how to approach knuckleball pitchers when we faced Phil Necro and Joe Necro. And I faced Candiotti two years in my career, but at that time, he, he didn't throw his knuckleball hard enough for me. He threw it softer, and I, had, I was able to sit back and wait. And I learned, as I mentioned before, that he would throw the breaking ball when he's behind in the count. And I had some success against Candiotti, but he's got a good one tonight. That one is ripped, and that is a fair ball. It'll be grabbed by a fan, so that will end up being a double. As Joe Carter stands out there with his hands on his hips, looking over at the fans like, leave that alone. Carter thought that would have ended up as a single. Well, the reason they tell you to keep the ball down is because your eyes are right there. That's a knuckleball up there about letter high, but your eyes see it. You jump all over it. Mel Hall certainly did. The only thing lucky about that for Candiotti is he just hit on top of it. Fans did reach out, and that's the problem. See you later. Nice of you to come, but uh, you're not going to see any more of this game. <laughs> you cannot reach out and interfere with the ball in play, even though you're that close. So the Yankees with a runner at second base, and Roberto Kelly with the opportunity. Hall came into this game just one for 13 against Tom Candiotti, and he's two for two in this game with a single and a double. Candiotti. Working with runners on in all three innings against the Yankees. And Kelly doesn't catch it. One and one. Since coming over to Toronto, Candy Audi has started 11 games now. His record's three and five with the Jays. He's had a couple of complete games. No shutout since arriving here. One one down to third. Kelly Gruber only needs one. In the dirt, John O'Rood makes the play. Roberto Kelly retired, no runs the double. And Mel Hall ends up stranded at second base. Yankees have now stranded one in each inning, two in scoring position. Devon White coming up, a 377 on base percentage when leading off an inning. And he has had three leadoff home runs in the last 17 games. This was in the first inning. As he crushed it for his 11th home run of the season. He has now reached base, leading off 12 of the last 17 games, three of those with a homer. A Ricky Henderson tail there from the left side of the plate. And he leads it off here in the bottom of the third inning. White, Alomar, and Carter. Bounced in front, 101. Gary, when Devon was with the California Angels, he fell out of disfavor there because they tried him as a leadoff hitter, and he struck out over 100 times a game. 100 times a season, four out of five years, 135 in 1987. They moved him down in the lineup. He ended up hitting 217 as last year there in 1990. But 1987, this man hit 33 doubles with 24 home runs and 87 RBIs leading off. 
stole 32 bases. Blue Jays, he's become more selective, although he has struck out over 90 times. He's got that great on-base percentage, hitting over 280, has been a catalyst in this offense. Really fills a gap. One of the problems the Toronto Blue Jays have had over the last four or five seasons has been at the leadoff spot. They really needed someone there. And when Roberto Alomar was picked up, Alomar was expected to be the leadoff batter because he has had great numbers in his career as a leadoff man. Stead with White here, they've been able to bat Alomar second and put White in the number one spot, which takes a little bit of an advantage of Alomar's ability to move people around. White does go around on that one. A strikeout victim, Wade Taylor, has his third strikeout of the ball game, one away here in the third inning. Gary Thorne, Ray Knight, ESPN's Friday Night Baseball from the Sky Dome that's open here in Toronto. This is the first of a three-game set for these two teams and for the Blue Jays, vitally important as Toronto's lead. Just one game over the Detroit Tigers in the Eastern Division. And the Yankees trying to get themselves back to 500, playing at 55 and 64, and they are nine and a half games out. Roberto Alomar grounded out his first time up. He's had four hits in his last 19 at bats. He will take that one for a strike. Well, that's a hard breaking ball there. Now that's that slider. Mark Connors taught him the curveball. That's the curveball. Hello. Hello. And you can see why they they're high on this man. He has a six point. 5-1 earned run average thus far this season with a 6-7 record. That one to left field. They were playing shallow but not shallow enough. Falls in. Roberto Kelly will get it back in in a hurry. And Alomar is on with a one-out single here in the third inning. Well, they had him played but if he hit that way that he wouldn't hit it very far but he hit it even shorter than they thought. But Gary, you, you, he threw a nasty slider, a hard breaking ball, and came back and threw a fastball up in the strike zone. Wade Taylor's done that this year by making mistakes. Look at this pitch. It's, it's inside part of the plate, but it's up. And Alomar, just with two strikes, protect himself, fought it off a good pitch, but just a little too much out over the plate. If you're going to come up and in, you need to come up and in off the plate when a man has two strikes. If you're going to throw a strike, you better try to make it down and in, down and down and away, up and in, hard off the plate. Now he's got to face Joe Carter with one away. And Carter going for the home run. 20 of the 28 home runs Carter's picked up this season have come right here at the Dome. He has liked home cooking very much. He's got a 311 batting average here in the Dome this season. Carter's really added spunk and fire and big numbers to this Toronto team. Very close play at first base. Alomar back. Wade Taylor's last fastball to Joe Carter, 91 miles per hour, Gary. So he's shown that he has a good breaking ball and a good curve ball. And that good fastball is just that he hasn't been able to locate. That's been his problem. Alomar, 38 stolen bases. He is third in the league behind Ricky Henderson and Tim Raines, so not that far behind. Henderson has 44, Reigns has 41. And Alomar has been caught just seven times. So he's a threat to go, and he's walking the lead off against Wade Taylor. And he's just about extended it as far as he can go. That's about it. That's <laughs> just about it. He has that right foot out there about four or five inches on the carpet. And I think he's going, Gary. It looks like he's leaning that way. Not a good pitch to steal on when you're heading the count. As a pitcher, you can do a lot of things here. You can throw that fastball up and in or pitch out. Don't want to throw anything soft. Looks like Matty Noakes wants the fastball in. And got it there. He put it right where he wanted it, didn't he? Oh, and two. Really tied Carter up on that pitch. Matty Noakes had a lot of trouble defensively at. Detroit much maligned there went to instructional league this past year with the New York Yankees Mark Hill former catcher with the St. Louis Cardinals has worked with him exclusively this season now they say he's doing a solid job behind the plate wow got him picked him off at first base 
So Wade Taylor helps himself out as he gets Roberto Alomar who took it one inch too far. Roberto thinks he's safe. What happens he catches him there his foot slips. Oh he got him. Looks like to me he got him. Roberto points to his shoulder but I think Donnie tags him from about his hand all the way up to his shoulder. No. Oh man. That's close. I don't know. He looks safe there. He looks safe there. That's why he was pointing to his shoulder saying he didn't get me ahead of my hand going into the bag but mighty close. Wade Taylor good move. Now there are two down and Carter ends up with nobody on base. They want to check the first but that wasn't even close. Shows you the difference between angles that top that camera up there on the top of the dome looking straight down on the play. You could see that. Mattingly's glove had not yet touched Alamar on the first shot. You just guessed. You'd think that it's touched him, but it really hadn't. That's why they don't allow those kind of shots to be shown in the stadium. Replays either way that are on close calls, just so fans don't get too disgruntled and umpires take too much heat on fairly. Got Carter. Wade Taylor's already picked up four strikeouts in this game two in the second and two in the third faces only three in this inning two two ball game. ESPN Major League Baseball is brought to you by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light it doesn't get any better than this and by Olympic, the family of products that protect your home from damage rain can do. Olympic stops the rain. And a 2-2 ball game. There you see the line over three with the Yankees out hitting the Jays. They've left some people on base. Tom Candiotti to Kevin Moss. That'll be fouled off. Strike one as we go to the fourth inning with Moss, or Matty Noakes rather, leading it off. Then Moss and Volardi. What do you think Tom Candiotti's a fastball pitcher? Uh -uh. 36 knuckleballs, 51 curves, 51 pitches out of 57, either a knuckle or curveball. That's why you don't ever have to worry about a fastball in this guy. I never did, and I don't know any hitters that really do because he can't throw the fastball by you. 77, 78 mile an hour fastball. Shows you what movement does for you. Matty Dokes gets a hold of that one, and if it stays fair, it does, it's trouble. Fan leaves this one alone, and that's why Carter was upset the last time that happened. It's a single and not a double. A leadoff single for Matt Notes. Scary. Here are the White Sox are continuing to have problems to keep up with the Twins in the West. Greg Hibbard struggling tonight against Cleveland. This shot in the gap by Chris James doubles in Glenn Allen Hill. He'd let her score on a Bayerga single. It's three to nothing. As the White Sox come to the plate in the fourth. Back to Skydale. You might note the person taking that throw in for the White Sox was Scott Fletcher. They have moved him back into the starting lineup at second base where they've had some trouble defensively of late. So Candiotti now with yet another man on. That's six hits off Tom Candiotti by the Yankees and Kevin Moss who popped out his first time up. Stands in leads the ball club with 72 free passes this season. Don't get it in the sweet zone or you will not see it again. Especially in this ballpark where home runs are hit. This is becoming one of the great yards for home run hitters. We've seen Devon White put one out here and in this game. See Kevin Moss made all kinds of headlines when he came up with that home run every 12.1 at bats. It's gotten a little more real this season. And Moss misses up high, two balls and one strike. Skydome right now is among the top six ballparks. Four home run hitters, with or without the roof open or closed. Two ball, one strike count. Moss, the designated hitter, rips one. Right field, way back at the wall. Goodbye, home run, Kevin Moss. A two run homer, and it is a 4 2 Yankee lead.
Kevin Moss, that great short stroke, hit on the baseball, just tremendous extension. He knew it as soon as he hit it, almost stepped on the bat there. I couldn't tell if that was a knuckleball that didn't do anything or if he tried to sneak a fastball by him, but you certainly don't want to try to sneak a fastball by that man. I have to believe it was a knuckleball that didn't move. Boy, he can hit the baseball, can't he? Randy Velarde puts that one in the gap to right center field. It's going to bounce all the way to the wall. It'll be played out there by White. Velarde's going to go for three. The relay throw, there'll be none. A stand-up triple for Randy Velarde. He's got a shot at a cycle. First two times up, a double and a triple off Tom Candiotti. The Aggies are pouring it on. Eight hits. For Kevin Moss, that was his 18th home run, RBIs 51 and 52. This is Velarde. Well, Candiati again, a ball up in the strike zone, knuckleball, good movement. Velarde looks like he inside outs that pitch. Devon White with a long way to run, hauls it down out there against that 375 sign. Velarde running hard all the way, easily gets into third base. That is his first triple of the season. And for Randy Velarde, his fifth. Major League triple. Galen Cisco is out. The Yankees up by a score of four to two against the best ERA in the league, 2.34 for Tom Candiotti. This is not what the Blue Jays needed to start this three-game series against the Yankees. I guarantee you, the Yankees are going to give Eastern teams a fit. They have a 26 and 18 record against the East this season. Bullpen's active for the Jays. And the Yankees are virtually done with the West. They've got three games against Minnesota, six against Texas. Every other game left is against Eastern Division teams where they have fared very well. Infield drawn in. Won't matter here. Center field. Tag up will be made. Catch made Devon White, and there'll be no attempt to go on that one. Velarde stays at third. The fans applaud the throw from center. Check in with Gary Miller. Gary, the Twins have the best record in baseball. They were down one nothing to Ben McDonald in Baltimore. When Kent Herbeck goes opposite field for a change, David Segui has no chance to catch up with it. That falls in for a double. Knobloch and Puckett, who had already driven in a run, both score. Three runs in the third. As the Orioles bat in the fourth, it's 3-1 to one, Minnesota. Thank you, Gary. And the Minnesota Twins to put some distance between themselves in Chicago and Oakland. Infield will stay drawn in with one out here. Velarde's on at third base. And Bernie Williams at the top of the order for the RBI chance. He'll go for the play at the plate. He has walked, scored, and grounded out. Bernie Williams is batting. 4.06 coming into this game with runners in scoring position. And they're right on top of it. Velarde runs real well, shortstop especially. Manny in front of the base pass. Say it again, base pass. That's good. That's what it is, too. <laughs> <laughs> You'd never know there were 50,000 people in this place right now. It is mighty quiet for yet another full house. But they are just sitting and waiting now as their Jays are getting bathed in base hits. Four runs, eight hits for the Yankees, two and three for the Blue Jays. Not going to catch up to that one. One ball, two strikes. Well, Bernie has a very long swing, a nasty pitch from Candiotti, that fork ball, that split finger, that knuckleball that just goes straight down. Look at this. It starts about chest high and all the way down to the ankle. But big swing by Bernie Williams. And with that runner on third base and less than two outs, just have to shorten that swing and try to make contact. His left, his right shoulder is just really pulling off the baseball. The Yankees brass, we've mentioned very high on Bernie Williams. Started mentioning a while ago about his base running instincts. Has all the ability in the world, but hasn't learned to run the bases yet. Same way about hitting. Hits the ball a mile when he hits it, but a lot of little flaws. That one blew to left center field. It's going to fall in. It'll be an RBI single for Williams. He just went with a pitch. Velarde scores three runs in in this inning. And the Yankees have a 5-2 to two lead. Credit Bernie Williams with an RBI single. And for Williams, 
He has driven in 20 runs now in 43 games. And Candy Audi has given up nine hits. And the Yankees really doing some damage here early in this game. It's now Steve Sachs. And again, they will try and hold Williams. The speedster at first base. There you see the Seattle Detroit game. Remember, a Detroit win and a Toronto loss. And Toronto and Detroit will be tied for first. That one is taken for a strike. Oh, and one, one away. Steve Sachs with a seven game hit streak with a single in the first inning. Candy Audi trying to find a way to shut the Yankee offense down here. And Williams again gets back to the bag at first. Boy, what a tough start. Remember that the opposition hitting just 221 against Candy Audi coming into this game. Fourth best, best ERA, and the Yankees are making it look like no problem. Sacks waits on it. Candiotti. They're going to short for one. The relay by Lee. And there's a rare double play turn. Toronto Blue Jays are last in the league in turning double plays. Candiotti needed one there and got it. But three runs in this inning, including a two run homer by Kevin Maz. Double play only the 85th. The Toronto Blue Jays have pulled off this season, and that is the fewest number in the league. Wade Taylor six wins seven losses Yankees have given him a lead John Olrude will foul off the first pitch strike one Olrude becoming much more aggressive early in the year Gene Tennis said that he was too patient early in the count getting in the hole that he does have a tremendous eye and he can turn on the fastball but he was just taking too many pitches and getting behind 0 and 2 lately he's begun to be more aggressive and his production has been going up almost weekly they need it as we showed you at the beginning and I have somebody else besides Carter picking up RBIs in this lineup no rude obviously expected to do that since he is the cleanup hitter fly to center his first time up fouls off the off speed pitch by Wade Taylor a ball and two strikes there's the offensive leader for the Toronto Blue Jays and a lot of categories he's among the top ten in slugging he's got 88 RBIs which is fourth best in the league. 28 home runs, third behind Fielder and Canseco. That's where they pitch him, right there. They have since day one. Get it in on him. Well, you mentioned offensive leader. I think he's the emotional leader also, Gary. We came to the ballpark, and I was beginning to wonder a little bit about the Blue Jays not being around them the last two or three weeks, seeing them struggle. But their attitude is really up. I was really surprised. Broken bat, base hit over Mattingly's glove. He scissored him. And all roads struck back just enough to get it out of reach and a single. All route on. Don't forget Sunday night ESPN's exclusive Major League Baseball coverage continues with Barry Larkin and the Reds taking on Howard Johnson and the Mets from Shea Stadium Sunday night at 8 o'clock. There is Joe Carter and Ray and I were both surprised when we got here to find out that Really this Toronto team's not down at all. Carter is one of the reasons he gives this ball club a whole new perspective. He's so bubbly effervescent outgoing and productive. Those other things don't matter if you don't put some numbers up. He does put the numbers up. And so we came in expecting to find a Toronto team here tonight. Maybe a little griping going on and a lot of long faces and guys wondering are we going to fold. That's not the case at all. They have a lot of confidence in their ability. They know they have the pitching and they think that they can score runs defensively. They're ranked on paper, as you mentioned, right near the bottom. But a lot of their mistakes have been when it doesn't matter. Of late, Gene Tennis says they've made some errors that have been crucial. But throughout the season, they've been very solid defensively when they've had to make plays. They still think they're going to win. And they mean it. Foul back by Maldonado. Andy Maldonado called out on strikes his first time up. Maldonado finding a home here. He's very happy about playing here, coming over from Milwaukee, a place he also liked but 
is not getting the playing time. Here he is. He's batting 273 in the 12 games he's played with the Jays. Three home runs and eight RBIs. Inside. Trying to bust him off the plate a little bit. Two balls, two strikes. Wade Taylor is not afraid to throw the ball inside. In fact, when he first came up, it was one of the problems Stump Merrill was concerned with. Stump went out the first game he pitched after the kid had been hit a couple of times pretty hard and said, they're going to keep doing that until you knock somebody off the plate. And he immediately hit somebody. Since then, he's hit four more to short. Velarde to Sachs to Mattingly. Double play turned by the Yankees. He takes care of the leadoff man. Talking about this Jays team being up, Kelly Gruber's been around when they've lost and when they win. I think we probably have every piece of the puzzle here. Um, whether the pieces are, are uh, going to be chipped when they have to fall and not fill in the gaps, uh, that remains to be seen. But I think every piece of the puzzle that uh, we need to win a championship this year, we have uh, camaraderie, we have uh, competitiveness, we have uh, uh, leadership, guys that want to go out and win, guys that love to play the game, and, and that's very important. And that's Kelly Gruber at the plate. Takes that one for a ball. The thing that the Blue Jays have to live with is two of the last four years, they've had a late lead going into the final month, final week of the season, and they have blown that lead. There are only four other teams in the century that have done that. So they hear about that all the time in the press. Kelly Gruber clocks at the center field. Bernie Williams back, back, makes the catch. That's why they are so high on him in center field. He was playing fairly shallow and covered a ton of ground. A 5-2 lead for the Yankees who are trying to send Toronto to their third loss in a row and maybe out of first place if the Tigers win their ball game and Toronto should lose here. And now all the Yankees care about is winning themselves and getting back to that 500 mark. Don Mattingly leads it off, taking the 0 for 2. Mattingly now 5 for 16 during the current road trip. See if Candy Audi can settle in here. Mattingly off the end of the bat to short. Lee running throw to John O'Rourke will get him. One pitch and one out in the top of the fifth inning. Candy Audi suffering something the Jays have struggled with of late and the an unusual struggle pitching. Take a look at that first part of the season. Not bad at all. The next 26 fantastic. You see what their record was. Look at the last month. Candiotti has a foul back by Mel Hall. That is shocking. I talked to all these guys and, and they don't realize that they're pitching a struggle. They felt that they pitched decently. You know, when you see an earn-run average up there almost to five on a staff that, when you look at them individually, the starters are, are right around three. Candiotti at 2.45 coming in. That is a shocking graphic. Since the All-Star break, Ray, the numbers, Candiotti's ERA is 2.3, which is great. Guzman is 3.44. Key is 4.37. Stottlemyre 4.03 and Wells 5.18. So the numbers have gone up for three of the five starters. That's a chopper towards the middle. Roberto Alomar has got no play on that one. And yet another hit. Mel Hall's three for three with a double, two singles, and an RBI. And he's on here in the fifth inning. With the Yankees getting a one out infield single from Mel Hall, their tenth hit of the game. Ten hits, and we're in the fifth inning. And the Yankee offense, not quite what it looks on paper in this game. Gary Thorne, Ray Knight with you from the Sky Dome in Toronto. 50,000 plus waiting to see if their Blue Jays are going to be able to regain control of this ball game. Right now it's the Yankees who are dominating with a 5-2 lead. Roberto Kelly 0 for 2. That's clocked the center field, but it's playable. Hauled in. That was just a shot. The center field hauled in by Devon White. Back to first hauled. White had that one positioned perfectly. Two down. Here, did you notice there's almost a unique crack of the bat here at the 
dome. I was batting practice today, guys hitting the baseball and the ball just almost resounding crack off the bat. Even with the roof open. Even with the roof open. Yeah. It really does. You, as big as this park is and with the roof open, you'd expect the sounds to just go up and out of here. That one's fouled back by Noakes. But I think what happens is where that roof closes on the outfield section, there's a big overhang. And it acts like a sounding board, I guess. And the sound seems to go up there and come right straight back at everybody in the dome. There you see it, it folds in under there on each side when the dome is open. About 90% of the field is actually outside when the dome's open. Even though there seems to be a great deal of coverage itself in the roof cover space. Bounced away. Borders blocked it. Hall will stay at first base. Fat borders. 31 percent effective in throwing base runners out. Almost exactly the major league average for catchers this year. Right here there are two down. Nope singled and scored in the fourth inning. Home run cut one and two. And he can hit some home runs. Matty notes 32 home runs in 1987 having a big year this year under the tutelage of Frank Howard. He has 20 home runs already 62 RBIs. Very happy to be in New York. One of the few people that enjoys playing there. He says the fans have been very good to him and he's regained his hitting eye. That one to second base Roberto Alomar needing but one. Go to John O'Rourke at first and that'll take care of it. So Noakes has retired no runs the Yankee base hit. Base runner though is stranded and the Yankees have now left four but they've also pushed five across. Five two lead for the Yankees with the Jays coming up in the bottom half of the inning the Blue Jays here at home this season thirty six and twenty eight. They are thirty and twenty eight on the road they've done well both places that's why they're still in first place. Yankees 30 and 31 at home 25 and 33 on the road as Mookie Wilson grounded out his first time up will lead it off for the Blue Jays Wilson borders and Lee 7 8 9 in the order off the fist to shallow right Mel Hall right fielder plenty of time to get under it called off Steve Sachs and Mookie's retired. Sunday night ESPN baseball 8 o'clock our exclusive major league coverage on Sunday night will continue this week as Barry Larkin of the Reds adding 290 17 homers big year for him and a great defensive shortstop and Hojo 26 homers 81 RBIs 8 o'clock Eastern time right here on ESPN Sunday night game Gary Thorne Ray Knight with you first half of our Friday night doubleheader and great to have you on board here. Hope you all have a great weekend wherever it may be. Pat Borders fouls it off. Another week and school's going to be open in a lot of places. And most people summer especially if you have children comes to an end. <laughs> they go to school you go to work vacation time's done. Borders takes the strike in the outside corner and the pennant races are joined in earnest. Borders the catcher RBI single. In the second inning of the game. He has one Devon White that one cracked in the air to center Bernie again Williams back not this time rolls off the top of the wall and over ground rule double. So borders two for two. Boy does Bernie Williams play a shallow center field. The way Taylor goes right back with a fastball trying to get it away and it goes right over the middle of the plate with that sinking movement. You surely mentioned that Bernie Williams playing as shallow a center field as anybody I've seen still almost gets to that ball as it bounces 390 feet from home plate. So the Jays trying to get back into it have five hits fouled off by Lee Pat Borders two for two I'm going to mention White with the home run the other RBI for the Jays Lee called out on strikes his first time up. Now Bernie Williams is way in against virtually everybody. He just believes he has so much speed that he can turn around and track a ball down in center field. He's trying to take away singles from hitters. Oh one delivery Lee 
Not even close on the off speed breaking ball. You see all the outfielders in now with Manny Lee just a slap type banjo type hitter, but Bernie Williams does play as shallow as anybody. The Yankee brass, one of the reasons they decided to move Roberto Kelly to left field is they felt that Kelly did not get to very many balls in front of him, that he played a very deep center field, which you, you're wanting to do when you play at Yankee Stadium because of the tremendous depth in the gaps there, over 400 feet and right center field especially. Roberto not too happy about the move to left field. But I think it's probably the right move. Roberto Kelly can be the type of guy that can hit fifth in your batting order and drive in 80, 85 runs every year. Not have to worry about your defense. Bernie Williams, the other hand, great defensive player. If he doesn't hit, you can still carry him on your team because he's such an outstanding defensive player. So where the Yankees are setting that up right now. Wade Taylor, a 2-2 count with one out, a runner at second base. Lee trying to get an RBI. Manny Lee's had three RBIs in his last five games. He won't get one here. Sacks hurries, doesn't get him. An infield carpet single for Lee, who's batting just under 300 against the Yankees this year. Good sinker by Brian Taylor here. The ball starts up, moves away. Manny just running as hard as he can because he's played second base here for years. Beats the throw barely. Steve Sachs making a good play, but watch him leap there because that sponge type infield, one of the softest infields in all of baseball here. The ball really bounds with overspin, and every ball that's hit out there ends up bouncing six, seven feet high if it has any altitude when it leaves the plate. Well, not much you can do on that ball. First and third now, and here's a chance for the Toronto Blue Jays to get right back into this game. They've got Devon White, their number one leadoff man up. He delivered his 11th home run in the first inning. 5-2 Yankee lead. Six hits in the game now for the Jays. One of the problems for White has been this situation. He's batting only 188 with runners in scoring position. He's down near the bottom of the pile in the league. He's got borders at third. And Lee over at first. Really kind of surprised at that number. This time he goes to center. Williams over. Makes the catch. Tagging up and scoring will be Pat Borders. An RBI sacrifice fly for Devon White, and it is a 5-3 Yankee lead. Borders crosses the plate. We check in with Gary Miller. Gary, the Twins had won 6 of 7, open that 6-game lead. Had a big lead on Baltimore tonight when Dwight Evans battles Allen Anderson with two board and goes dead center. Home run number 384 of his career is a three-run blast. 4-3 to three, Baltimore now with the lead in the fifth inning as we go back to Skydo. Orioles, another team that'll play a spoiler role. Borders in, a runner on at first base now with two down. Sacrifice fly by Devon White. This is Roberto Alomar, scored a single in the, had a single in the third inning. Pitch out, not going. Well, you wonder why Bernie Williams can play shadow. Look at him. The ball's just off the bat, and he's already running. That's what you call instinct, anticipation. He sees the ball out over the plate, starts running almost as the ball is made contact with and is able to run that ball down. Sometimes it looks like he's off before the ball hits the bat. Well, that's the anticipation that you have in center field and you don't have in left and right field because you can see the position of the ball as it goes to the hitter, see how he approaches the ball. My father always said, anticipate the ball being hit. Bernie Williams does that. And he lay it first, and the pitch misses inside to Roberto Alomar. A 5-3 ball game, and every indication that both offenses are going to be working here. He will keep an eye on Lee at first base, six stolen bases and eight chances, and he's got himself a pretty good lead over there. 2-0 the count, not going though. That's the one he would have run on, and the count's 3-0. If Alomar can get on, the big guy's waiting, Joe Carter.
Wade Taylor working himself into a little hole here if he walks this man. He does not on that pitch. Elmar tried to assist in the call, but it was there, three and one. A little smile on his face. He pretty sure that was a strike. 43 walks, 64 strikeouts. Lee back. And the fans have finally had something to cheer about here. The two outs, a lot of managers will run the runner three and one in case a ball is hitting the gap, he can score. See if Gene Tennis decides to do that with Manny. There he goes, three one. Ball four, I think. Yeah, that didn't matter. The walk to Alomar is the second given up by Taylor in the game. And now Lee's at second, Alomar is at first, and the RBI man is coming to the plate. Joe Carter will stand in with two down and two on, and Wade Taylor and Carter will go mano a mano. Joe Carter's got a chance to become the first major leaguer ever to have back to back 100 RBI seasons in both leagues. 89 with Cleveland, 90 with San Diego, and now RBI leaders Cecil Fielder on top. Carter's got 88. Is he going to catch Cecil? I don't think so. But he's I given don't it think a so run. <laughs> but is he going to get 100? Yeah. Yeah. Stop Merrill just visiting the mound, talked to Wade Taylor, just telling him, look, kid, you know what this guy hits? The scouting report tells you. Joe Carter likes the ball out over the plate. He likes to extend. He has a very short stroke. You can get him if you bust him inside off the plate and throw him breaking balls off the plate away. But don't throw him anything middle of the plate out or middle of the plate in. Unless it's down and in hard. Miss it. And he does. Ball one. I always thought that he hit so many balls to third base hard that I thought he liked the ball in. Gene Tennis says no, he likes the ball away, and he rakes that pitch on the outside part of the plate to left field. Towards the mound, Wade Taylor will get an enormous out. Ground ball back to the mound by Carter, who's now 0 for 3. And what could have been a big inning ends up with just one in. Yankees up 5-3. One of the reasons the home run in the fourth inning, number 18 for Kevin Moss, who stands in to lead it off here in the sixth. And another shot, but not nearly as deep. Center field. Boy, is he a fly ball hitter. Vaughn <laughs> White hauls it in. One away on one pitch by Tom Candiotti. One down in the sixth. Velarde and Kelly will follow. Looking outside the Sky Dome. That's what it looks like from above with the roof open in the busy city of Toronto on a Friday night with a good seafood place right up to the right side there which will be visited after the game <laughs> one away Velarde triple double scored twice and he just misses another extra base hit strike one. Baltimore as we said in a spoiler role here for the rest of the season and right now doing some spoiling as they've come back to time Minnesota four four the twins up by six over Chicago and Oakland starting the day. Andy Audi knuckles it in 0 and two. Well this is where you're in trouble as a hitter 0 and two Tom Candiotti now can throw that knuckleball one of his three or four different speeds move it in or out he actually can make the ball go right or left. There's a knuckleball that almost looks like a slider but he gets to one side of those seams and pushes the ball out and the wind just takes the ball or the currents whatever it is out there that makes that ball move. That one is bounced. Two balls two strikes one out. And he caught the outside corner that's the first strikeout. For Tom Candiotti as he gets Randy Velarde and there are two down. That's a bit unusual. You've talked about the home runs hit here in this Sky Dome and mentioned earlier how this is really becoming a home run hitters haven. You take a look here the most home runs by Park this season as you would expect Tiger Stadium 
Riverfront a bit of a surprise. It's usually more down towards the middle. Yankee Stadium has moved its way up there, but the Dome is also moving its way up. Over the last five seasons, ranking of ballparks that surrender home runs, the Sky Dome is ranked fifth over the last five years. Of course, it hasn't been here five years, but in the couple of years, well, two and, how, and a half how, years it's played. How do you do that? Though? Well, you take all the other parks and you do it over five, and then you put the Sky Dome for two and a half, and it ends up being fifth oh, okay. over a longer period of time. One one pitch. <laughs> and that one is taken two balls and one strike. You got me there, partner. <laughs> I do. You hit home runs here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a nice place if you got some power. Pat Kelly fouls it back. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, 5 3 lead for the Yankees. Tom Candiotti, look at him. He does look, looks like he's hardly broken a sweat. Thrown close to 100 pitches, yet he never looks like he labors out there. And he's gone a lot further in this game than the other start he had against the Yankees. Figure a guy who's winning the way he is, the best e ERA, has got to have a lot of runs. Well, he doesn't. For the Indians, look at the run support. Look what's happened with the Jays. Even less. 2.6 runs for him in games that he's starting. Second walk given up by Candiotti, and let's check in with Gary. Gary, Bill Gullickson had a shutout going into the fifth against the Mariners. Had just given up a run when Pete O'Brien connects, takes him upper deck for his 11th home run of the season. Ken Griffey Jr. had doubled in a run. He scores in that shot. It's now three to one, Seattle. Back to Skydo. It's that home run park we were talking about, known as Tiger Stadium. Two down. Pat Kelly on at first. And the leadoff batter, Bertie Williams, had an RBI single in the fourth inning. Has walked and scored a run as well. And we'll take that one. Ball one. Candiotti, two walks and a strikeout. Wade Taylor, the Yankee starter, two walks and four strikeouts. Here's Gruber in at third base. Even with two down, because of the speed and bunting ability of Bernie Williams, he gets that extra advantage of having the infield drawn in a bit. In fact, a good bit at third. 1 0, runner goes. Foul back. One ball, one strike. Williams is one of the Yankees added this season. As they looked ahead early to next year, they pulled a lot of people out of what was the starting lineup earlier and added some of the young names. They've had 12 starting pitchers that have been used this season. There have been a lot of faces around the Yankee clubhouse this year. One ball, one strike. That one towards the hole. Alomar can't get it. Picked up by Carter, and he will hold Pat Kelly at second base. So Williams is on. Williams, with a couple of hits and a walk, has been on three of the four times that he's come to the plate. See the Yankees on opening day. Here's the lineup that the Yankees had. Now compare that with tonight. You still have Mattingly and Sachs. You don't have Blowers over there. Well, already starting at shortstop. Bam Bam Mullins. Out of there. Kelly's gone to left field now. Barfield's hurt and is out and hauls in. And Williams is playing center. The Sacks and Mattingly, the only two guys that are in the, in the positions they started the season in. A lot of changes. Galen Sisko is coming out. 11 hits given up by Candiotti now. Runners on at first and second and at two down. So the Yankees in a building season. We'll continue to look ahead. They've got to make some decisions. You mentioned Steve Sachs and what they do there. Then do they go to the free agent market? They're in the discussion with Bobby Bonilla. There's no question they would like to acquire Bonilla. Why not? Well, they need a third baseman, and Bobby Bonilla likes to play the outfield, but Bobby Bonilla would be a great addition to this ball club, as would Viola. You look at this club, and they have, well, along with Taylor, they have Scott Kamenecki and Jeff Johnson, young pitchers that all throw over 90 miles an hour. Scott Sanderson's there. They pick up a guy like Viola 
and punch like Benia and, and the stability there. If they could trade Steve Sachs for someone, uh, another pitcher, a fourth, fifth pitcher, then this team could be all of a sudden in contention in a hurry. You're right. You're absolutely right. They're just not that far away. They have a lot of young talent. You look at the Pat Kellys and Bernie Williams, and then the young pitchers coming. Real hope. Steve Sachs, right field, right at him. Carter takes the line drive, and that'll do it. No runs, a hit, two more. Base runners are left on by the Yankees. They have now stranded six in this game. Ready to go. Wade Taylor to John Olrood, and he's got a base hit. Olrood, first ball hitting now is two for three. He led off the fourth inning with a single. He leads off the sixth inning with a single. He's hit safely in 21 of his last 28 games at a 325 clip. John Olrood may be ready to put some offense up for these Toronto Blue Jays. And the fans try and get in it again. Candy Maldonado coming up. Candy hit into a double play that took Olrood out in the fourth inning and was called out on strikes. He's due. Strike one. Another sellout crowd on hand here. They pack them in at an average of 49,160. They're setting all kinds of records. Third consecutive season. They've drawn over 3 million fans. 3,146,000 plus. Inside. They've got a great TV contract. You think they're not making money? Look at this. Toronto over even the Dodgers and well over the Dodgers. The White Sox drawing extremely well, but nobody's close to the Blue Jays. They've got TSN up here and two TV packages, CTV, that make them a ton of money, and yet the dome itself is in trouble as far as the hotel and other facilities here. They don't have anything else here that draws the big crowds. I heard today they may have spent, they said they spent $500 million on the building of this dome, but... Somebody told me today up here that the total package when it came to site purchase and site preparation probably a billion dollars. That's a lot of overhead. 2-1 delivery. And it misses to Maldonado who's ahead on the count. Three balls and one strike. You have everything from the Hard Rock Cafe to McDonald's here along with restaurants, the Dome Hotel with those famous rooms that look out on the field. That's a big restaurant glassed in there in the bottom where fans can go in and eat sit watch the game a beautiful health club with a big pool in it lots of stuff here three one ground ball to second is Maldonado going to do it again sacks Valardi no off the mark they'll get the force out at second base Maldonado reaches on the fielder's choice Valardi to sacks sacks is throw wide of Don Mattingly though at first Jerry one thing you have to do and Candy certainly should do it as a veteran ball player Try not to do too much when you come to a ball club to send a pennant race. I went to the New York Mets in 1984 when we were chasing the Cubs. In the first week or two there, I tried to hit home runs on every pitch because I had been benched in Houston. It's very difficult to go to a club that's in contention and stay within yourself and not try to be the man all of a sudden. Candy certainly has the ability to drive in runs and to be a catalyst in this ball club. I think he will. But that there, that's evident to me. He swung at a bad pitch, three and one, trying to do too much. He wants to play so badly on a regular basis, which, as we mentioned earlier, he wasn't doing. He was out with an injury. He's played only 47 games all season, 13 of those with Toronto. He just got back in Milwaukee when he did not pass through waivers and was picked up by Toronto. You know, he's just itching to get some games in. Kelly Gruber broke it back to left field. Kelly runs over and makes the catch. Gruber is retired. He's 0 for 2 with a walk, and it'll send Maldonado back to first base, and there are two down. So college football season at hand, and ESPN will have it for you, kicking off the coverage of college football August 31st. The doubleheader, East Carolina, Illinois at 4, Pittsburgh and West Virginia at 7.30. CFA football right here on ESPN, and those Thursday night games, a great Thursday night package. Tennessee, Louisville, Houston, Miami, Virginia, Georgia Tech. Just part of that package you'll see on Thursday night. Maldonado with two downs on at first, and Mookie's up, takes the pitch away. Wilson, the designated hitter, is 0 for 2.
Fouls that one just beneath us behind home plate. One ball and one strike. Talking about attendance Toronto set the record on Tuesday getting to the three million mark in 62 games. They had the old record they set last year and they did it in 64 games. One ball one strike. They always drew well at Exhibition Stadium down on the lake not very far from here only about a half mile away but this is incredible what's happened here in attendance in Toronto. One ball one strike delivery Mookie stayed off that two and one. The only thing about Exhibition Stadium as a player you never knew that they drew that many people because it was a football field it actually had kind of a turtles back outfield and, and about 20,000 of those fans would be way out in left center field in the football pavilion out there. That was a crazy field. 2 1 pitch misses up high. John Habian warming up in the bullpen for the Yankees. Down the left field line at the old stadium, the seats just kept going. They didn't curve in, they kept going like down the football sideline. So the fans were sitting beyond the wall looking back to see the baseball game. It's very strange. Wade Taylor 3 1 on Wilson and Moogie slaps it to third. Play will go to second. Sacks over to take the throw from Pat Kelly for the force up. No runs on. A base hit and one base runner left on. Yankees maintaining a 5 3 lead here at the Dome in Toronto. ESPN Major League Baseball is brought to you by AutoZone, the right parts at the right price. And by Gitano Men's and Boys Wear, reflecting today's American lifestyle. Gary Thorne, Ray Knight, along with the close to 50,000 on hand here tonight. As the Yankees have the 5-3 lead, the Yankees got a run in the first. Hall had the RBI single, a run in the second. Pat Kelly, the RBI single. In the fourth inning, an RBI single by Williams, a two-run homer by Kevin Moss. That has given him the lead on Tom Candiotti, who's given up 11 hits. Toronto's responded with Devon White's home run in the first inning. Borders has an RBI single, and White a sacrifice fly RBI. 317 lifetime hitter Don Mattingly. Over that 300 mark again, takes the strike one and one on it. Tom Candiotti again all those 87 knuckle or curve balls just 12 fastballs. Third base. Kelly Gruber. And the thing about him when he does throw the fastball he is not trying to throw it for a strike. Normally he shows it inside part of the plate or just tries to nip the outside part of the plate down and away for a strike. But whenever he has to get someone out it's always a knuckleball or the curveball. Candiotti went away in the seventh inning. See if he can get Mel Hall. He hasn't yet. He's three for three. Well, he's thrown 101 pitches. And if you wonder about the wear and tear of a pitcher's arm as opposed to a fastball power pitcher, hard slider pitcher like Dave Steve, who had a lot of elbow problems, it is very easy to throw knuckleballs. You don't use your shoulder hardly at all. It's not a velocity pitch. You don't have to get great arm speed. And the curveball is the same way. He only throws that about 68, 70 miles an hour. So it just doesn't wear and tear on your arm. So you can throw 130 or 40 pitches as easily as a power pitcher can throw 80 or 90. By Candiotti. Picked up. Lee. Nice play. Manuel Lee had to make that play. Alamire would not have been able to, and he did. Candiotti coming with another knuckleball starting up. You can even see the rotation there. Almost gets to the ball. Mill Hall running hard. And this is the right play because Manny Lee is moving toward his throwing target. And anytime you can make a play moving toward the target, you make the play. You see Alomar would have been moving to his right. A lot tougher play for him. Good play. Two down. So a little help for Candiotti. And Roberto Kelly is 0 for 3 in the ball game with the Yankees up by 2. 
numbers for the season. Boy, the Yankees really done some damage up here. These two teams ought to trade home fields. The last five years, the Yankees are 26 and 16 here. Toronto's 28 and 14 at the stadium in New York. <laughs> Figure that one out. And they are three and three this season against one another. Each has won two on the other's field. Two ball, one strike count. And there's a shot. Nobody's going to get that one. Base hit to center field. Devon White up with it. Kelly's on with his first hit. And it comes to two down here in the seventh inning. Now with two down, will Roberto Kelly do any running? Well, I think so. I think with two outs, you go ahead, even though you have a power hitter like Matty Noakes there, you get yourself in running scoring position, especially when you can steal 80% of the bases, as does Roberto Kelly. He's not going to do it on Candiotti, though. That's going to be it. They let Galen Sisko on his way out. 12 hits given up in the ball game in six and two-thirds innings by Tom Candiotti, who will leave without a chance to pick up the victory. Tom Candiotti hit for 12 and six and two-thirds innings in the first half of our Friday night doubleheader on ESPN. Gary Thorne, Ray Knight, and Bob McDonald. Bob McDonald, 6'2", 180-pound, 26-year-old left-hander from Toms River, New Jersey. Fastball that really sinks and slatter. Two-pitch pitcher, throws an occasional changeup to the turnover, but predominantly sinker slider. Bob McDonald recalled from Syracuse on June 2nd. He had been with the club earlier in the year from April 23 through May 24 without a record. It worked very little in fact during that first time comes on here with a runner on Roberto Kelly at first base and two down and Matt Noakes up with the Yankees leading 5 3 McDonald will try and hold the fort now Don't give the Yankees any more hot hitter right here though and Noakes takes it up high ball one Matty hitting 226 off the left handers this season. There you see the overall numbers. McDonald appeared against Milwaukee in last night's game, gave up a run on three hits. He's back to back performances out of the bullpen here for acting manager Gene Tennis. Grew up in Yankee Land, went to Rutgers University. McDonald did. Noakes takes the strike two balls and one strike over the bridge from the stadium in East Orange New Jersey and now lives same area in Tom's River four years of minor league baseball got his first shot for the Blue Jays last season but pitched in just four games last year runner goes had him picked off John O'Rourke will make the throw the tag and uh, see you later Roberto Kelly. It'll be a caught stealing. That'll end the inning with one hit. Nobody left on. Seventh inning stretch time from the Dome in Toronto. Miller Highlight brings you tonight's streaks, peaks, and valleys. Streaking, Ryan Sandberg, as he's done every year he's been in the major leagues, has at least 200 bases. The peaks, the Atlanta Braves are 12 games over the break-even mark for the first time in seven seasons. The valleys, Houston, four errors on Thursday. They have the most in the major leagues, 115, and updating the Braves' upcoming with back-to-back -back home runs. Right now, back to Skydo. Thank you, Gary. Gary Thorne, Ray Knight, seventh inning stretch time here at the Sky Dome. We've seen our second pitcher, Bob McDonald, replacing Candiotti for the Jays. We'll see our second now for the Yankees. John Habian, much traveled John Habian, 6'2", 195 pounds, just 27 years old still, Gary. And I are talking about all of his many travels. This year having an excellent year out of the bullpen for the Yankees. Has a good fastball, about 88, 89 miles an hour. Curveball, slider, and split finger changeup. So Habian will come on to work here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Obviously a very important game in the race. Toronto on top, but only by a game over the Detroit Tigers. So they all matter big time right now. You can measure. 
John Haby in delivering and Borders was doubled and singled. Misses that one. There you see the standings. The Red Sox are going to be on the West Coast starting a West Coast swing against the Angels. So be brought up to date on ESPN. Those are the scores that won't be in the paper that drive you crazy. The Detroit leading. That make you mad when those teams go on the West Coast in the races. Yeah. <laughs> When I turn the VCR on and catch the 8:30 in the morning Sports Center. Oh, one count. Yankees up by a score of 5-3. Ray and I were looking at Habian's movements. 1982, he started his professional career for the Baltimore Orioles. Oh, one pitch bunted at by Borders. I think no. I'm sorry. Mike Riley at first said he didn't. Habian has never played. In any year in the same place, he has always moved it's up, not, down, or around. It's, it's amazing. That's yeah. amazing, isn't it? That's eight years of keeping your bags packed and waiting for the phone to ring. It's better than working. Well, he was up and down four different years with the Orioles. I happened to be there in 87 when he was there for almost the whole season, but from 85 to 88, he split his time between Triple A, Rochester, and Baltimore. We got a lot of ticket stubs. <laughs> <laughs> For trains, planes, boats, and cars. <laughs> two ball, two strike count. He has been very effective for the Yankees. 2 2 delivery. Borders is gone. Habian strikes out the first battery faces, and we'll check in with Gary Miller. Gary, as promised in the NL West race, Dave Justice home run off Terry Mulholland. The last time he homered was just before he went on the disabled list in mid-June. I guarantee you he did. And into black goes Brian Hunter, the next batter. Back to back, that's his ninth of the year. It was Justice's 12th. Smith knocked in Belliard for the second time in the game. It's four to one Braves in the sixth. I think, Gary, that's called putting a team in the black. <laughs> he did it right there with that home run. 5-3 here. Habian working to Lee. Singled his last time up. One for two. Blue Jays down by a couple of runs. And Habian misses inside. Habian in his last 15 appearances has worked 20 and two-thirds innings. He has not allowed a run. 11 hits, six walks, and 20 strikeouts in the last 20 and two-thirds innings. Strike call. He brings it. Three and one on Lee. Or two and one, I'm sorry. Steve Sachs. That'll take care of Lee, and there are two down in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, Gary, that Brave Ball Club is for real. You look at that club, tremendous young talent they've, they've assembled over there with Gant and Hunter, Mitchell, Justice, Lemke, Blouser, all that young pitching that they have. They added two veterans and Terry Pendleton and with Lonnie Smith playing probably part-time now. And then when Sid Bream comes back, they are really going to be the team of the 1990s. Two really good ball clubs, Dodgers and Atlanta, going to do battle. That's a nice race. Two down, nobody on. Habian after the leadoff batter, Devon White, now homered is 11th in the first. Sacrifice fly in the fifth. Two RBIs in the ball game for Devon White. Check swing right back to him. Habian makes it and makes it look easy. Very strong inning for John Habian. He just overpowered the three Toronto hitters. We have completed seven now at the dome, and the Yankees up by two. A year ago, Cecil Fielder led the majors in RBIs with 132. He's at it again. Tigers were down 3-1 to one in the fifth, but they're having a field day against Holman, Calvin Jones, and the Mariners. Fielder whoops that single in for two more RBIs. He's got 108 on the season. It's 7-3. They've got six runs in the inning, and they're still batting. Back to Skydo. And you know there's some scoreboard watching going on as they look at this score. Blue Jays lose. Detroit wins. It's a tie for first between the Jays and the Detroit Tigers. Bob McDonald working here. That one is drilled foul by Matty Noakes. 
Now the Toronto Blue Jays we mentioned earlier. First of all this is a very good record. You got a ball club that's doing this year after year is pretty successful. The trouble is 1987 they finished second after they went into the final week leading last year final week leading and just like 87 they lost it on the regular last day of the regular season. Those are the things that hurt the Toronto Blue Jays. Their skipper is in the hospital with the bad back. Gene Tennis has taken over the acting manager. 0 and 2 under tennis and right now trailing 5 3 in this one. And the fact is that you put a team on the field as competitive year in and year out as this team has been and they are very successful. Certainly back in 87. Can he do it. No. They had the year that everybody thought that they were going to win it. And then they did fold but when you have this kind of talent you go out there day in and day out. You have other people other teams that are going to challenge you. This is the major leagues. There's not five or six percent of difference in any of these ball clubs Gary and at any time any team can beat you. So my hat's always been off to the Toronto Blue Jays and the Boston Red Sox because of the fact that they're always there year in and year out. And then the Mets this year are having one of those years that they're off so people can get all over the Mets if they want to. But when you can put this kind of talent on the field every year and be competitive it's a hit in the in the monetary state. Economically, you're going to make a lot of money, and the fans keep coming to the ballpark thinking that this is going to be our year. Yep, and it may very well be. A long way to go in this one. Matty Noakes on at first base, second hit, two for four. Kevin Moss, 18th home run, came in the fourth inning. The Yankees try and add to their lead. They've got 13 hits. Check swing. Alomar over. Can he flip it to short? No. Well, he's spending some time down on the turf, and right now, not enjoying it very much. An infield single for Moss. He's two for five now. Two for four, I'm sorry. And runners on at first and second base with nobody out off Bob McDonald. And these are the cr kind of crazy things that happen when you begin to struggle and start to lose. Check base hits, balls that just bound over people's heads. That's why when you ask the Toronto Blue Jays man to man what's going on they say well it's not any really big thing it's a lot of small little things and you've just seen a couple of small things happen. Galen Sisko on his way back out again and he's going to make another change as Randy Velarde do up in the order with a left hander on the mound and runners on at first and second they decide to make a pitching change right here and they will get McDonald out of there and we will see the third Toronto pitcher coming in and this obviously is an enormous point in this ball game. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball 8 o'clock exclusive coverage on Sunday right here. Barry Larkin Cincinnati Reds hitting 290. 51 RBIs and mowing them down at short. They will take on the New York Mets led by Howard Johnson's 26 homers and 81 RBIs. Sunday night 8 o'clock ESPN. McDonald leaves a third of an inning a couple of hits off him two runners on now Noakes at second Kevin Moss at first and here's the man who threw the rumblings last night. He did I, I watched that game on television last night Gary he threw a couple of fastballs that he got up out over the plate and they were drilled but a truly great fastball pitcher 95 96 mile an hour fastball consistently has been clocked as high as 97 good hard slider occasional change up. You see there are 103 strikeouts in 84 innings. This man leads all of Major League Baseball in strikeouts per nine innings. Could not get the save last night as he came on with a lead in the seventh inning and Milwaukee got back on him. Now the Yankees have two on. They're looking for the bunt here from Velarde. He doesn't give it. Second base. Everybody moving. Nowhere to go but first. Oru there. They had the wheel on so sure were they of the bunt so everybody was moving in at third short to third second to first and Alomar ended up looking for someone to throw to and Oru got back and took it the Yankees have two in scoring position and one away. Well Gary that's why you need to find out if the, if they're going to show bunt. I never did like the wheel on the first play you usually use a regular bunt when they show bunt and establish in the manager's mind. That it's going to be a bunt, then you can start putting the pickoff plays and the wheel plays on. But seldom or very rarely do you see the wheel play put on the first play. Now, two in scoring position, and Ward with a big batter to face in Pat Kelly. 
RBI single for Kelly came in the second inning. Wayne Ward will be up there again in games pitch 61st appearance he leads the American League in appearances. Kelly with runners at second and third infield drawn in fouls it off well, one and one and to explain that wheel play you call it the rotation play It's when the third baseman breaks in the shortstop goes to third second baseman normally breaks to second first baseman in and they're just trying to get the runner at third base with the third baseman feeling the ball throwing back to the shortstop. If the ball's hit as it was there everybody's moving and nobody's on a bag where you're taught there's a play like a slug bunt where you're taught to square around and when you see movement you just try to hit the ball back at the middle because no one's there. coming home this is a steal a squeeze play was on borders will tag out Matt notes somebody missed it. Well, Pat Kelly, excellent bunner, great handler of the bat. There you see Bucky Showalter. He squares around. It's a squeeze, but he reaches out. He's got to do something better than that. That ball's a foot outside. Even if you step across the plate and get yourself out, at least a runner at third base is safe. Just a feeble attempt at a squeeze effort. Matty Noakes does not move until the pitcher releases the ball. Perfectly executed rundown, running back to the bag till your third baseman moves towards you. If he doesn't, you tag the runner. Remember that out. Fly ball to center field. This for the third out. Called in by Devon White. So the Yankees got the first two on and do not score here in the eighth inning. Let's see if that will open a door for the Jays, who are down 5 3. Time is running out for Barry Larkin and the Reds to make up ground in the NL West. Howard Johnson and the Mets face the same uphill climb in the NL East. It's desperation time, live at 8 Eastern on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Stump Merrill making the decision to squeeze with young Pat Kelly. Kind of wondering why he didn't go ahead and let Pat try to break the ball game open. Here, runners on second and third with one out. Dwayne Ward, nasty slider, suicide squeeze. Pat Kelly, a, really a weak effort trying to make the bunt. As Pat Borders runs, notes back and, ta back and tags him. But, Gary, I'm just wondering why he chose to squeeze in that situation. Pat Kelly, a rookie, very tough to do against a guy that throws as hard as Dwayne Ward with that great movement. I think it's probably easier to put the ball in play swinging it is to try to bunt against a guy with that kind of velocity and that kind of breaking ball. Didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. And uh, it could be very <laughs> important here in a 5 3 ball game because, as you said, Ray, the chance to blow the game open was there with runners in scoring position, two of them, and only one out. The question now can the Blue Jays take advantage of a little open door policy here? Roberto Alomar, Carter, and Olroot up. Single, third inning, walk in the fifth for Alomar, who needs to get on base right here. And that one clocked to right field. He may not have to wait very long. Mel Hall back at the wall, off the top of the wall, on his way to second base. Backed up by Williams, on his way to third base, a leadoff triple, just what the Jays needed. From the sky cam, there you see a fastball right down the middle of the plate. Alomar jolts it. This little man has a lot of power. Falls down on his knee swinging. Mel Hall giving an all-out effort, leaping right at the wall, just out of his reach, hitting that wall hard. Alomar, with a great speed, comes up with his ninth triple. He is second in the league in triples this season. Mel Hall went a long way to try for it and now in this 5 3 game here's Carter who can tie it up with one swing of the bat. Just one thought on John Havey and Gary when I played with him in Baltimore he was always very tough for two or three innings. They tried him as a starter then he would kind of fizzle out his first inning here very strong good fastball good hard breaking ball but the more pitches you make him throw the less effective he is. Fouled off. He gets ahead on the count on Carter. 0 and 2. 5 3 lead for the Yankees. Detroit's winning in their game. Toronto just one game up on the Tigers. Eight hits in the ballgame now for the Jays. 
Cavey and the Carter. Leaned him over the plate, stayed away from it. A ball and two strikes. 27 year old on for Taylor. Wade Taylor, pitcher of record, could win it. Three runs, seven hits, six innings, two walks, four strikeouts for Taylor. Matt Noakes setting outside, another breaking ball. Got him. Kreider struck out twice as old for four. One away. Joe Carter, tough time driving in runs tonight in crucial situations as you see Matt Noakes shift out there. Habian throwing a hard, nasty slider right on the black, down and away. Goodbye. And Stump Merrill's going to make a change. He's going to go with the percentages here with John Olrude, a left handed hitter coming up. He will get Habian out of there. And he will go with the left-hander out of the bullpen. So a 5-3 game eighth inning. Alomar still on at third base waiting to come home. ESPN Major League Baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Extra Hard Red Devil Clear Polyurethane for the finish of a lifetime. By the Walker Advantage Muffler, the most advanced muffler you can buy. And by Upper Deck, nobody does baseball like Upper Deck. John Oru will stand in here at the Dome. The Yankees are leading Toronto 5-3. A runner at third base, Alomar, eighth inning, one out. And the new pitcher is 29-year-old left-hander Greg Cattery. Olrud waiting. Strike one. Greg throws a lot of strikes. He comes right at you with a fastball and a slider. Having a good year this year. 81 strikeouts in 93 innings. Throws about 88, 89 miles an hour. 6'3", 214 pounds. Last outing on Wednesday in Kansas City. Two-thirds of an inning. Gave up one hit. Last seven appearances. Four starts and three in relief. Even back and forth. See Olrud with runners in scoring positions. Been a struggle. Missed outside. Two ball, one strike count. Olrud has done pretty well against left-handers, though. John Olrud's hitting 267 with a couple of home runs off Southpaws this year. It really doesn't make much difference to him. I think Stunt went a little quickly to the bullpen, especially with Maldonado and Gruber on deck. Alomar coming home. Mattingly will make the play himself, and we've got a one-run ball game. So Olrud on the ground ball out. He'll be credited with the RBI that makes it a 5-4 ball game. Olrud 49 runs batted in as Alomar scores after the leadoff triple. Stump Merrill going back to the mound. When you have 12 pitchers as the Yankees do, it's really a luxury. Only four bench players. And he has a bunch of arms out there in that bullpen. Two more left-handers, Guterman and Howe. Howe on the disabled list right now, but he has right-handers Island, Farr, Leary, Monteleon, and Plunk. We may see them all. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Farr is on his way in, the right-hander, as Cattery works just the one batter and gets the out. Toronto trying to hang on to first place here at home of the Dome on ESPN's Friday Night Baseball, our first of two. Gary Thorne, Ray Knight. Toronto just picked up one. It's now a 5-4 game. The Tigers just one game behind Toronto. What's Detroit doing tonight, he asked. And the pitch is outside for a ball to Maldonado. They are five up on Seattle. First place in the balance in these two games. Steve Farr, the new Yankee pitcher. Maldonado with the bases empty, takes it outside, 2-0. Oh. Steve Farr, 34 years old. The Yankees stopper this year with 17 saves. Good curveball and slider and fastball that he spots. Two down, 2-0 two oh delivery. 3-0 to Maldonado. dangerous man in this situation far knows it trying not to get it in on his power alley 3 0 delivery to him and he walked him on four straight here are the lines tonight Taylor went six innings three runs seven hits 
Pavey in an inning and a third, a run on a hit, a couple of strikeouts. Cataray a third of an inning and now five. Steve's last outing on Tuesday in Kansas City. Worked an inning. Grounded a second base. Sacks. Steps on the bag, and that will do it. So a leadoff triple by Alomar. The only run, the only hit. One left on a 5-4 ball game. Wade Box. He'll be coming up on ESPN as the Red Sox open their West Coast trip against the California Angels and Boggs right now just a point away from Rafael Palmero for the lead in batting average in the American League. Jim Abbott will be on the mound for the Angels going for his 13th win. He's 12 and 8. Steve Fiziog and Dave Campbell are standing by there. Boston and California. That's coming up next on ESPN. And another big game. Red Sox just three and a half out starting today's play. 5-4 ball game. Yankees coming up top half of the ninth inning. It'll be Bernie Williams Steve Sachs and Don Mattingly. You see the line over eight. Toronto has battled back to get to within one. They'll get another shot at it with Wilson Borders and Lee do up in the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Yankees want to try and add to it right here if they can. Ward's pitch is outside ball one. Greer. So far this season, everyone has said it's too early. It's too early. We have too many games left. We've now reached the point that it's not too early. Any team that's going to do anything has to start doing it right now. You go into a six, seven game losing streak, you're going to bury yourself. Now's the time. Last week in August has always been the time that people turn on that spigot and go out and play baseball and, and play for the pennant. Now's the time for them to do it. And Toronto knows that. They have had winning months all along this season, but here in August, 8 and 12 coming into this game. They had a 15 and 11 July, 16 and 12 June, 15 and 12 May, and a 12 9 April. Wrong time to have that losing month. Ward behind on the count here. Three balls and one strike on Bernie Williams. Sparky always said, Sparky Anderson said, you play the first 120 games to get in contention. And it's really a 40 game pennant race and that's exactly what we're down to now. Three and two. I love the way managers divide the season up to tell their players what it's like. Tommy Lasorda likes to tell him you're going to win 50 and lose 50 and it's the other 62 in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, no matter what. No matter win what. 50 and lose 50. Yeah. See Cleveland's gone has beaten Chicago now 4 three the White Sox tied for second six games behind Minnesota tied with Oakland starting today. 3-2 deliver to Bernie Williams is down low. Lead off man is on. And the fans moaning and groaning a little bit. 50,214 of them here tonight. Steve Sachs moving in. Dwayne Ward early in his career especially when he was a starter with Atlanta and his first two years here at Toronto had a lot of control problems. The last two or three years he's really found the plate found that slider ability to throw strikes consistently. Speedster at first Sachs trying to move him around Borders will not have a play on that one. That's how important that run potential run is that's out there right now strike one. Steve Sachs an excellent bunter but he squares around and then watch his barrel drop. You cannot drop your barrel and get it below your top hand. You have to have the barrel above your left hand in order to hit the ball on the ground. You see he squares around his bat is right with his barrel above his hands. Then all of a sudden when the ball gets there he just drops it. That causes you to pop the ball up. Look at his barrel goes down. The ball goes up. One strike on him. They're looking for the bunt again. Gruber coming in at third. He fakes it. Borders on the pitch out. Nobody moving. One ball, one strike. Ward having to work hard right here. Buggy Showalter going through the signs for Sachs. Sachs has four sacrifice bunts this season.
One one count. Hold Williams at first. Sack started to drop his hands there. My thought was that after he bunted and after he threw a pitch that Stump Merrill might turn to a hit and run. Steve Sachs hits the ball to right field on the line as well as anybody. But it looked to me that I saw his hands move a little bit, so I think he's going to bunt. Williams has spent a lot of the night diving back in at first base. All that speed out there and a potential two-run lead if the Yankees can get him across the plate. Nobody out. Dean Tennis. Working for Cito Gaston as the manager. 1-1 one, one, Williams goes outside. Borders throw and a good one got him. Pat Borders. Williams is caught stealing. Well, they throw a wrench in all of our thinking. No hit and run, no bunt. Very tough to steal on Dwayne Ward. He shuffle steps home, gets the ball there very quickly. Good throw, perfect throw. Manny Lee puts the tag on him. Had Bernie Williams slid with his front leg first and hit the bag, he would have been safe. Lee on the ground ball by Sachs, two down. You notice that, Gary, his front leg, which was extended, went completely by the bag, and he tried to touch the bag with his back leg. Watch this. Look at his front leg. It's way out there, and he ends up getting tagged on his back leg or his waist, but his front leg was already past the bag. It's a hook slide with the wrong leg. Yes, you drop, you slide. Any of you young people out there, when you steal a base, you slide directly into that base. If you have to board the tie, tag, it's too bad. You're already out anyway. Williams has been caught five times now, five for ten stealing bases. And the Yankees now have two down and nobody on here in the top half of the ninth inning. A 5-4 ball game. Yankees leading. They've left seven men on base in this game. Sachs in the first inning was picked off at third on a wide turn. Williams caught stealing. And there's a base hit by Don Mattingly. So Mattingly's first tip. A single with two down in the ninth inning. And the Yankees keep the inning alive here against Dwayne Ward. First hit off Ward since coming on for Bob McDonald. And that will bring Mel Hall to the plate. Seventy one runs batted in. Fouled off. Gary Dwayne Ward has already thrown eighty four innings this year. He's the only pitchers in the major leagues to pitch at least 100 innings in relief during the past three years. The longest streak ever, seven years, Raleigh fingers back from 72 to 78. But this man is truly a workhorse. With those 84 innings this year, he's going to go over the 100 inning mark four straight years. A lot of work. Bounce, good stop by Borders to hold Mattingly at first base. One ball, one strike, two down. Every Yankees had a hit in this game now as they've collected 15 hits off Blue Jay pitchers tonight. Five runs, though. It's still just a one run game. Hall, RBI, came in the first on a single. Takes the pitch down low. Two balls, one strike. Looks like to me Dwayne is forcing a little bit. I've watched him this year and become a great admirer of, of him. Last time we were in, he was just mowing people down, but he looks like he's he's a little herky jerky, not free and easy, like he's forcing the ball a little bit. 2-2. Two -two. All didn't think so. Almost overthrowing. Almost overthrowing. It, it's just not as smooth as I remember it, Gary. You know. You see a guy and then you get a mental picture of it and you don't see him for a while. He just doesn't look as smooth to me as he did last time that I saw him here about three weeks ago. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Mattingly at first. Fouled off. Borders caught that one. Let's see if he can still walk. That was right on top of the shin guard. 
you know, it's funny about pitching and hitting. When you try to swing hard and generate a lot of bat speed and do it with body movement, you end up slowing your bat down. Same thing with pitching. If you start jumping on the mound, trying to overthrow, then your mechanics get off and your fastball is not as fast. Maybe what he's doing here, two balls, two strikes. That one popped up. First base, John Olroo. And that will do it. No runs. The base hit. And one left on. Bottom of the ninth inning. The Jays have a final shot. Coming up here at the Dome in Toronto, our storyline on our first of two on this Friday night. With the Yankees leading 5-4, the big blow, the home run by Kevin Moss, a two-run shot that came in the fourth inning. Joe Carter's had opportunities for Toronto, but not been able to get it done. Candy Audi hit hard again by the Yankees. He has two toughest outings this season against the Yankees. Steve Farr against Mookie Wilson, strike one. Wilson, Borders, and Lee are due up Mookie arguing the called strike. Mookie, the designated hitter, 0 for 3 in the ball game. Far out after his 18th save. Mookie wishes he hadn't argued the first one. He's going to argue this one too. Well, guys like Farr will make you do that, Gary, because they throw the spots. They throw the baseball right there on the outside part, the inside part, just moves it around. But we'll look at Matty Noakes. Sets the glove there, and Farr hits it right there. Little outside, but because he frames it and gets out there with the pitch, he's given the pitch. Chuck Merriweather, the home plate umpire, emphatic on those two. Mookie's got to guard the plate now. Inside hitting. Ooh, Steve Farr. Aaron gone away, came back inside and got him. Well, Gene Tennis has three left-handed hitters, Rob Ducey, Myers, and Mullinex. As you see, the breaking ball down and in. Mookie moving that back foot, trying to get out of the way. Maybe trying to get out of the way. Maybe not. Maybe not. After, after it hit him, he looked like he tried to get out of the way, didn't he? In a hurry. Noakes. He's rejuvenating himself. Mookie Wilson's on, hit by a pitch on an 0-2 count. Mookie still with speed at first base as Steve Farr now has the potential tying run on in this game in the bottom of the ninth inning. Borders is up. Mullinix has come out in the on-deck circle to pinch hit for Lee. So he's going to butt him over here and let Mullinix try to do the job. Pops it up. No play for Noakes. Strike one. Pennant races. Bottom of the ninth inning, one run ball games, fundamentals. Fundamentals. You better believe it, Gary, and it happens year in and year, year out. This team last year was the worst, and that man right there, Rance Molinex, told me this, and they were the worst team fundamentally in baseball. They didn't bunt well, they didn't put the bat on the ball and hit and runs, they didn't hit cutoff men. This year they've done that much better. But in a bunt situation like this, you must get the ball down and give your offense two opportunities to get a base hit and score that tie and run. Steve Fire knows that, keeping Wilson as close as he can at first base. Charging down the line, Pat Kelly at third for the Yankees. Borders bunts it. Good bunt going foul. Not a good bunt. A lot of bounce on it. And he's behind on the count 0 and 2. Well, this what what you come to baseball for right here. Bottom of the ninth inning from the Dome in Toronto. Gary Thorne, Ray Knight. Toronto's trying to stay in first place. Tigers are winning. Tigers win. Toronto loses. It's a tie for first. The Yankees have put all the numbers up here as far as hits are concerned, but the five runs on 15 hits. Toronto four and eight. Those are the standings of the Red Sox waiting out in California to start their game against the Angels. We will have that one for you coming up. Oh to the count. So Borders 0 for 2 trying to get it down. He has three sacrifice bunts this season. Steve Farr. Borders to short. Ballard. He'll get nobody. Oh, what a 
break for Toronto. Farm makes a good 0-2 pitch. The breaking ball, middle of the plate away. Perfect double play ball. Couldn't ask for anything more. Velarde charging the ball, and in his haste, trying to throw the ball to second base, makes the error. What you want to do there is make sure of one out. You don't overcharge the baseball. You get there, you set your feet, get yourself in a good throwing position, make the throw to second base. Wow. Rob Ducey has come on to run at first base for Pat Borders talking with Mike Squires first base coach. The Yankees have opened the door. Steve Fire had it right where he wanted it. Borders didn't get the first two down for the sacrifice. Fire got the ground ball Taylor made for two Borders a very slow runner and he didn't get anybody Two on nobody out. And Lee will take his turn at bat. Manuel Lee has singled. They're looking for the bunt, the fake at second. Gary, last year, Manny Lee failed to get runners over more than any other Blue Jay. He attempted to bunt last year 20 something times and only was successful five times. They worked on it in winter ball, they worked on it in spring training. Now they consider him a good bunter. He has seven sacrifice bunts inside for a ball. You saw Pat Kelly at third. He's got one of the toughest jobs, one of the toughest plays in baseball. Ray, you played there. Explain why. Well, it's very difficult because what you do is you have to read the bunt. The third baseman guards the line. He covers everything that's bunted hard down the line. Anything you draw an imaginary line, anything that's six, eight feet off that line, the pitcher has to get it, and you cover third. So there you see he's squared up toward the pitcher. Anything that's three or four feet to his left, he lets the pitcher get. Anything at him, he charges and makes the play at first. Because the Yankees want to try and get that runner, Mookie Wilson, at third base on a bunt. Mookie at second. Ducey at first. 1-0 count. Nobody out. Lee squares again. Goes after it. Throw to second. Wilson just got back. With a shortstop, Velarde sneaking in behind him. Well, Gary, that's why you have to always be anticipating throwing the baseball. Velarde had to throw his glove up. Matty Noakes double pump. If Matty Noakes comes up right here and fires a second, but look, look, he double pumped. Actually, the, the runner was in it, the hitter was in his way, but it cost him a good three or four steps and then almost still got Mookie. One ball, one strike on Lee, who's already squared around. Bunts at it again and fouls it off. Well, this is a game of who's going to make the last mistake. The Yankees make the error on the double play after Borders couldn't get the bunt down, trying twice. Now Lee can't get it down, and the count's one and two on him. Well, Manny was a terrible bunter last year. I haven't seen him bunt this year. Last year, he caught my wrath because in two or three games up here, he had a tough time getting balls down, and Anytime you're a middle infielder, your number one weapon offensively should be able to bunt the baseball. It's something that creates offense and in this situation wins ball games and maybe eventually the pennant. Detroit winning big in Seattle against Seattle. And it hit him! He has loaded the bases two hit batters. On a one-two count, he was looking for the bunt. Tried to get it in on the fists on him and again got it in too far. Stump Merrill, the Yankee manager, pacing. The bases are loaded with nobody out. Or just trying to get a fastball too far inside and he just holds on to it too long. Man, he just nails him in the thigh, but very tough to bunt the ball fair on a pitch inside. And there it is. He tries to bust it inside and make too fine a pitch. He just drills him. Omens of luck mean anything. The Omens are going with Toronto. It is incredible what's happened here for the ninth inning. <laughs> They've had two guys get hit with two strikes on them who couldn't get a butt down. <laughs> Bases loaded. 
Lukey Wilson, the lead runner on at third base. Rob Ducey is the pinch runner at second. And Lee's on at first. Steve Farr has now hit a total of four batters this season, two in this game. 50,000 rocking the dome in Toronto. The game on the line and Devon White. The infield is drawn in. Nobody out. 5-4 Yankee lead. Fire from the stretch and White takes the strike. Remember Devon White is hitting 188 with runners in scoring position. Gary the outfield was way in as if this next run would be the winning run. Now they've moved back to normal outfield depth. I got real excited because Roberto Kelly and Mel Hall was only about 200 feet out there in the outfield as if the run at third base was a winning run. It's just a tying run. Somebody finally got their attention from the dugout and they moved back. You can keep your head about you. <laughs> when all about you are losing theirs. Oh one count. A mostly quiet night at the dome no longer. Fire checks Wilson White takes the slider inside one ball one strike. Well the Yankees have to make the play home because there's no way in the world they're going to double Devon White. He's perhaps the fastest runner to first base in baseball. Two and one. Devon White this season has grounded into six double plays. Four of those, though, when he's batting right in. Dean Tennis. Can his club make the comeback and get him his first win here? Sitting in for Cito Gaston. Two ball, one strike count, nobody out. Base is loaded. 5 4. Yankee lead. White checks swing. Three and one. There's no place to put him. I'll tell you one thing, that's a very tough pitch right there. Steve Farr throws a fastball right on the knees. Right on the knees. Remember, it's not where he catches the ball, it's where he crosses the plate. Crucial call goes for the Blue Jays. Devon White fouls it off, full count, three and two. Here you mentioned all the things that have happened in this inning. And these are the type of things that turn seasons around. Blue Jays struggling all year, all month, pardon me. Now everything thus far this inning has gone their way. Everything. Blue Jays are eight and eight in games decided in their last at bat. They're hoping this will be their last at bat for a W. Three, two, White swung on and missed. Far struck him out. That is the seventh time in 14 at bats that Steve Farr has struck out Devon White. Well, Gary, look at this big swing. Now, let me tell you something. He swings as hard as he can on this ball. It's a breaking ball, and just look how hard he swings. No way. When you have bases loaded, all you have to do is make contact, hit a sacrifice fly, get the ball game tied. You don't try to be a hero and break it open. Good pitch selection there by Steve Farr, electing to go to a slider, three and two. Now a double play can end the inning in the game. One down, the infield will back up. Double play depth at second and short. Even with the bag at third is Kelly, Mattingly behind the bag at first. Bases loaded and one out. One and one. Roberto Alomar tripled in the eighth inning, single in the third. Looking for his first dinger with the, or anything, with the bases loaded. 1-1. One, one. Heading to the seats. Well, Gary, I've been in a situation many times, fortunate enough to be on pennant contenders most of my career. There's just a different attitude you take up to the plate in game-winning situations. You have to learn to be able to play with it. I don't think it was until my third year in the big leagues that I really got comfortable with hitting in clutch situations. And after that, I was a very good hitter, and I really enjoyed that feeling of pressure. I learned to concentrate better, and I always felt that the pressure was on the pitcher. But it's something you have to get used to. 
A lot of these Blue Jays haven't been through it. This edition of the Blue Jays haven't been through it. That's the only way you get used to it as you go through it. Alomar takes it down low. Two balls and two strikes. Luki Wilson started the inning on an 0-2 count. He was hit by a pitch. Should have been a double play ground ball hit by Borders. The error charged to Velarde. Two on. Lee couldn't get two bunts down. He got hit by a pitch. Bases loaded. One out to center field. Coming on. Bernie Williams can't get it. One run scores. Second run coming to the plate. The Toronto Blue Jays have beaten the Yankees by a score of six to five. Roberto Alomar gets jammed, just flips the ball out over the shortstop. He knew it was good. He's excited. He's happy. Just one of those games when everything went right for the Toronto Blue Jays. Alomar, the two RBIs to win it. The loser is far. And the winner is going to be Dwayne Ward. And the Toronto Blue Jays have beaten the Yankees in the ninth inning, 6 Five. For Ray Knight and all of our crew, this is Gary Thorne.